The 55th session of the Senate and the second regular session of the 18th Congress is hereby called to order. Senator Pampilo Ping Lakson will lead the chamber in prayer. God Almighty, on this International Women's Day, we pray for all the women in the world and the roles that they play for all humanity. Not only do we see in them the image of thy mother, the blessed Virgin Mary, but also the beauty of her compassion and eternal love. Grant us thy mercy and wisdom to respect and protect the weak against the wickedly strong as we walk unto your path of righteousness and glory. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This uh, remains standing for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. <laughs> <laughs> Secretary, will uh, please call the roll. Roll call of members, the Honorable Senators Angara. Present. Binay. Present. Cayetano. Present. De Lima. De La Rosa. Rilon. Present. Gachalian. Present. Go. Si, present. 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 Po. Pardon. Ontiveros, Lacson, Lapid, Marcos. Present. Pacquiao. Pangilinan. Present. Unmute na naman. Ayun, mute. Tawagin mo si Dayan para mag-stay. Tell the third. Ho! Present. Recto. Present. Revilla Jr. Present. Tolentino. Present. Villanueva. Villar. Present. Zubiri. Present. Senate President Soto III is present. With six senators physically present and 16 senators virtually present for a total of 22, the chair declares the presence of a quorum. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, move that we dispense with the reading of the journals of the 53rd session Tuesday, March 2, 2021, and the 54th session Wednesday, March 3, 2021, and consider them as approved, Mr. President. I so move. Any objection? That is done. The journals are approved. Mr. President, uh, I see the hands of Senator Gordon being raised. Uh, Mr. President, may we recognize the good gentleman from Zambales. How Senator was I Gordon is recognized. I to say present, but I, I don't think I was marked. Uh, we did not uh, hear, the, the, the Secretary did not hear the response. So there are 23 Senators present. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I move, uh, before I just like to remind everyone, we'll have third reading after the reference of business, uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move for the reference of business. Secretary will proceed with the reference of business.
Reference of business, messages from the House of Representatives, letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that on 2 March 2021, it passed the following House bills in which it requests the concurrence of the Senate. House number 7174, an act prohibiting the active use and display of commercial billboards during typhoons. Referred to the Committee on Public Works. House number 7814, an act strengthening drug prevention and control, amending for the purpose Republic Act number 9165 as amended, otherwise known as the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002. Referred to the Committees on Public Order, Health and Finance. And House number 8741, an act renewing for another 25 years, the franchise granted to Franciscan Broadcasting Corporation under Public Act number 8736 entitled an act granting the Franciscan Broadcasting Corporation a franchise to construct, install, establish, operate, and maintain radio broadcasting stations anywhere in the Philippines where frequencies and or channels are still available for radio broadcasting. Referred to the Committee on Public Services. Letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that on 3 March 2021, it passed the following House bills in which it requests concurrence of the Senate. House number 8668, an act establishing a general hospital in the municipality of Villanueva, province of Misamis Oriental, to be known as the Northeastern Misamis General Hospital and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committee on uh, Committees on Health and Finance. House number 8758, an act converting the San Jose District Hospital, the municipality of San Jose Province of Occidental Mindoro, into a general hospital to be known as the Southern Occidental Mindoro General Hospital, and appropriating funds therefore. To the Committees on Health and Finance. House number 8759, an act establishing in the municipality of Limay Province of Bataan, a general hospital to be known as the Limay General Hospital, and appropriating funds therefore. To the Committees on Health and uh, uh, finance. House number 8726, an act establishing in the municipality of Nabua, Riconanada District, province of Camarino Sur, a technical education skills development authority test the training and assessment center to be known as the Riconada Camarino Sur test the training and assessment center and appropriating funds therefore. To the committees on higher education and finance. House number 8728, an act establishing the city of Ligao, province of Albay, a technical education skills development authority test the training and assessment center to be known as the Ligao City Albay Test the Training and Assessment Center and Appropriating Funds, therefore. To the Committees on Higher Education and Finance. House number 8729, an act establishing the Municipality of Jordan, Province of Guimaras, a Technical Education Skills Development Authority, test the Provincial Training and Assessment Center to be known as the Guimaras, test the Provincial Training and Assessment Center and Appropriating Funds, therefore. To the Committees on Higher Education and Finance. House number 8753, an act granting the Happy Jockey Club, Inc., a franchise to construct, operate, and maintain a race Race tracks for horse racing in the provinces of Batangas, Laguna, and Cavite. To the committees on uh, public services and games and amusements. Now, House number 8755, an act granting Sulu Tawi Tawi Broadcasting Foundation Incorporated, a franchise to construct, install, operate, and maintain radio and television stations in the provinces of Sulu and Tawi Tawi. To the committee on public services. Bills on first reading, Senate number 2084, an act requiring dentists, dental hygienists, and dental technologists to keep patient dental records, repealing for the purpose Presidential Decree number 1575, otherwise known as the law, requiring practitioners of dentistry to keep records of their patients, providing funds therefore and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Soto III. To the committees on civil service, ju and justice, and uh, finance. Senate number 2085, an act granting Philippine citizenship to Daniel Hong Ju Um, introduced by Senator Angara. To the Committee on Rules. Senate number 2086, an act establishing the Philippine Geriatric Center under the Department of Health and Appropriating Funds, therefore, introduced by Senator Ontiveros. To the Committee on Health and Finance. Senate number 2087, an act instituting a policy on bloodborne viral hepatitis testing and screening, introduced by Senator Go. To the Committee on Health, Labor, and Finance. Resolution, PS Resolution number 673, Resolution commemorating the 2021 celebration of International Women's Day on March 8, introduced by Senator Villanueva. To the Committee on Rules. Communication, letter from the Office of the President of the Philippines, transmitting to the Senate two original copies of Republic Act number 11525, entitled An Act Establishing the Coronavirus Disease 2019 COVID-19 Vaccination Program, Expediting the Vaccine Procurement and Administration Process, Providing Funds Therefore and for Other Purposes, which was signed by President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. To the Archives.
We have additional reference of business. Additional reference of business, Bill on First Reading, Senate Number 2088, entitled An Act to Ensure Gender Responsive and Inclusive Protocols and Programming to Address the Gender Differentiated Needs of Women During COVID-19 and Other Public Health Concerns, Emergencies, and Disasters. Introduced by Senators Ontiveros, Binay, Cayetano, De Lima, Marcos, Poe, and Villar. To the Committees on Women, Health, and Finance. Resolutions, PS Resolution Number 674, Resolution Honoring the Late Father Joaquin G. Bernas, SJJSD, for his immeasurable and invaluable contributions to the legal profession and society, and expressing the profound sympathy and sincere condolences of the Senate on the untimely demise of the best-known authority on the Constitution and one of the framers of the 1987 Constitution, introduced by Senator Soto III. To the Committee on Rules. P.S. Resolution Number 675, Resolution Honoring the Life Dedicated to Service and Glory of God of Constitutionalist Father Joaquin Bernas S.J. and expressing the profound sympathy and sincere condolences of the Senate on his passing. Introduced by Senator Gordon. To the Committee on Rules. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, we have two measures for approval on third reading. Yes. We'd like to recognize uh, Senator Bato de la Rosa, Mr. President, before the third reading, as he'd like to give a manifestation. Senator um, Ronald de la Rosa is recognized. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. I just would like to make a full disclosure before I cast my vote on the Senate measure that uh, my wife is a. Uh, uh, is, uh, cacao grower uh, in uh, her uh, native province of Daba Occidental. Although, hindi pa kumikita, Mr. President, because one year old pa lang yung kanyang cacao na tinanim. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, thank you. We place that on record. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we welcome the full disclosure of our dear, dear colleague. With that, Mr. President, I move that we approve a third reading. Senate Bill number. 1741 and ask the secretary to proceed with the roll call vote, Mr. President. Secretary will read the title of the measure and uh, conduct a roll call vote. Senate Bill Number 1741, an act declaring the city of Dabao as the chocolate capital of the Philippines and the entire Region 11, Dabao Region, as the cacao capital of the Philippines. Roll call vote, the Honorable Senators Angara. Yes. Binay. Yes. Yes. Cayetano. De Lima. De La Rosa. Sorry, yes, yes. Cayetano, yes. De La Rosa. Trilon. Yes. Cachalian. Yes. Go. Yes. Gordon. Yes. Yes. Ontiveros, Laxon, Lapid, Marcos. Yes. Pacquiao. Yes. Pangilinan. Yes. Pimentel the third. Yes. Po. Yes. Recto. Yes. Revilla Jr. Yes. Tolentino. Yes. Villanueva, Villar, yes, Zubiri, yes, Senate President Soto III. With the assurance of Senator Villar that the Senate version will be uh, upheld, I vote yes. Abstain. Seeing like abstain. With 22 affirmative votes, no negative votes, one abstention, Senate Bill 1741 is approved on third reading. Mr. President, may we recognize Senator Cayetano and Senator Pangilinan as well as Senator Villar after. Senator Cayetano first. Senator, Senator Pia Cayetano is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I'd just like to explain my vote. I vote yes because I share her honors, the sponsor's uh, desire to acknowledge the effort of uh, the farmers and the uh, local governments of the Davao region in the effort that they have put in to promote cacao. 
Um, however, I, I need to put on record my concern that a measure like this uh, may may prove to do the opposite, which is, in other words, instead of incentivizing, may be a disincentive to the other regions because they may likewise be trying hard. And yet, uh, you know how it is, if somebody is already considered number one, um, there may not be as much incentive to try hard and to be number two. And that is why my proposal uh, was really to have some kind of hall of fame wherein uh, those who do stellar stellar performance could be acknowledged over a period of two years, three years, five years, and it gives a, a real reason for those to catch up if they want to also be acknowledged. So I do have grave concerns, uh, Mr. President, on uh, declaring regions or cities or LGUs as a capital, especially when we are still in the developing stage of our agriculture. I do. I would like to uh, request uh, the committee to review this policy, um, perhaps to rephrase it in the future as a, uh, like I said, something like a, a hall of fame, wherein later on the respective um, uh, the the agency would then be the one to determine based on a set of factors so that we can be more um, more scientific in our approach and it can truly be a way to incentivize. On that note, I already voted yes, but I hope Her Honor the Good uh, Sponsor would take into consideration these concerns of this humble representative. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, uh, Senator Pangilina is uh, recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Just a brief manifestation of our yes vote that uh, we would like this representation, uh, Mr. President, would like to associate himself with the earlier manifestation of the Senate President when he voted in favor of this uh, measure, that there is this assurance from the chairman, chairperson of the Committee on Agriculture, that the Senate version uh, will uh, be the version that we will be, or at least uh, will be ratifying when the bicameral conference committee report is presented to us, uh, mainly because the House version has incentives uh, being provided for uh, Davao region and Davao city, which precisely is one of the concerns raised by the industry. And the Senate version does not have these incentives. Uh, so for the record, Mr. President, uh, that this is the explanation as well of our vote. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, the majority leader. Yes, ma'am, uh, sir, oh, yes, finally, Senator Villar. Yes, um, Senator Villar is recognized. Okay. Uh, I wish to thank the Senate for passing SB 1741, declaring Davao City as chocolate capital of the Philippines and Region 11, Davao Region as the cacao capital of the Philippines. I wish to reassure you that I will... Uh, keep up my word of honor to you and at the same time uh, I will consider your manifestation in the coming bills coming from the house because they are all coming from the house they are local bills and we just follow with certain uh, revisions their uh, version of the bill and of course I wish to thank uh, Senate President Soto and uh, Senator uh, Senate Pro Tempore Recto, Senate Majority Floor Leader Mick Subiri, and the Majority Senators, uh, especially Senator Bato de la Rosa and Senator Bongo, who are co-sponsor and co-author of the bill, Senator Angara, Villanueva, Binay, Bong Revilla, Senator Gachelian, Gordon, Marcos, Cayetano, Senator Tolentino, uh, Pacquiao, Pimentel, Lacson, Senators Po, Lapid, and the majority floor, minority floor leader Drilon, and Senators Pangilinan and Hontiveros. I wish also to acknowledge the help of the Department of Agriculture. At maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat. It's just that there are bills coming from the House that are like this. Then in the future, I will ask you how we will phrase it so you will be satisfied. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Senator Risa Ontiveros, uh, Majority Leader, is uh, seeking the floor. You are recognized. 
Thank you, Mr. President. I apologize that I wasn't able to make myself seen uh, earlier. I would have wanted to allow the good sponsor to make the last manifestation at this point. But just for the record, Mr. President, uh, I join with the Senate President uh, and my colleague in the minority, Senator uh, Kiko, to make it of the record, make it of record by way of explanation, uh, that I, I join with uh, their own explanation of vote and count as well on the word of honor uh, of the good sponsor. For the record, Mr. President, thank you. Thank you. Majority Leader. Thank you very much, Mr. President. The second item on the agenda, but before we proceed on this uh, second item, we'd like to recognize Senator Win Gachalian for a short manifestation. I believe I believe he would like to be made co-author. Is that correct, uh, Senator Gachalian? I got a message from your staff. Senator Gachalian is recognized. That, that's for the uh, BFP bill. Uh, uh, sorry, my majority floor. It, uh, yes. It's not for this bill. We're tackling, that's right. Before we vote on third reading, I believe you'd like to uh, make uh, yes, a manifestation. Um, yes, yes. I would like to manifest to be a co-author of the uh, uh, strengthening of the BFP bill. Thank you, Majority Floor. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. You. For the record, Mr. President. With that... All right. All right, Majority Leader. Thank you. With that, Mr. President, I move that we approve on third reading Senate Bill number 1832. Ask the Secretary to read the title and proceed with the roll call vote, sir. Secretary will read the title of the measure and conduct a roll call vote. Senate Bill number 1832, an act strengthening and modernizing the Bureau of Fire Protection and Appropriating Funds, therefore, and for other purposes. Roll call vote to Honorable Senators Angara. Yes. Binay. Yes. Cayetano. Yes, but I'd like to explain my vote later. Thank you. De Lima. De La Rosa. Drilon. Yes. Cachalian. Yes. Go. Yes. Gordon. Yes. Ontiveros. Laxon. Lapid. Marcos. Yes. Pacquiao. Yes. Pangilinan. Yes. Pimentel the third. Yes. Po. Yes. Recto. Yes. Revilla Jr. Yes. Tolentino. Yes. Villanueva. Villar. Yes. Zubiri. Yes. Senate President Soto the third. Yes. With 23 affirmative votes, no negative votes, no abstention, Senate Bill 1832 is approved on third reading. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, two of our colleagues wish to... Uh, Senator De La Rosa yes, is recognized. We recognize Senator De La Rosa, Mr. President. Senator De La Rosa is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, napapanahaw na ang pag-aproba ng Senado sa BAP Modernization Act ngayong buwan ng Marso na noong 1966 sa visa ng Presidential Proclamation Number no. 115-A Series of 1966 ay idineklara bilang Fire Prevention Month. This year's theme is sa pag-iwas sa sunog di ka nag-iisa, Mr. President. Sa, pagpa sa pagpasa po natin ng panukalang batas na ito, Ang nabanggit na tema ay magiging realidad na. Sa ating magigiting na mga bumbero, hindi po kayo nag-iisa. Ang Senado ay inyong kasama. Mr. President, we will not allow the BFP to prevent and suppress destructive fires alone. Sa tulong ng Senate Bill No. 1832, masisiguro natin na magkakaroon ng sapat na fire officers fire trucks, personal protective equipment, at ibang equipment na kailangan para maapula ang mga nakakamatay na sunog. Bukod pa rito, mas magagampanaan ng BFP ang kanilang tungkuling bilang first responder sa mga sakuna, 
aksidente at iba pang emergency. Mr. President, allow me to thank the authors of this life-saving legislation, Senator Bungo, Senator, Senate President Soto, at Senator Rebilla, kasama ng mga co-authors na sina Senators Cayetano, Tolentino, Angara, Po, Pacquiao, Zoberi, Recto, Villanueva, Marcos, at Villar. Likewise, Mr. President, allow me to thank our minority floor leader, Senator Drilon, for his invaluable inputs and support for the passage of this bill. I also would like to extend my profound gratitude to Senate President Pro Tempore, Senator Recto, for introducing amendments that will ensure sustainable funding for the modernization program, as well as amendments introduced by Senator Gatsalian to improve coordination between the BFP and local government units. Also, amendments from Senator Villanueva on providing training for the Emergency Medical Service Unit of the BFP and BFP volunteers from Senator Gordon. Ang pagpapapasa po ng panukalang batas na ito ay unang hakbang sa patuloy na pagmomodernisa ng BFP. Makakaasa po ang ating mga kababayan na ating babantayan at titiyakin ang magiging maayos na magiging maayos ang pagpapatupad sa batas na ito. We will also ensure that our annual national budget will include sufficient funds for the program projects of the BFP for their modernization program. Muli po sa tulong ng Kongreso, may isa sa katuparan na ang ating, pang na ang ating pangarap na lahat ng bayan sa buong Pilipinas ay magkakaroon na ng sariling fire truck at fire station. Wala na sana tayo makikita ang bumbirong kulang sa protective equipment habang lumalaban sa nakakamatay, nakamamamatay, nasunog. Wala na sana tayong mababalitaang namatay dahil walang nagresponde na ambulansya sa mga sakuna. Sulit po ang ilang bisis na pagpapapisiar test ng mga opisyal ng BFP sa pangunguna ni Chief Imbang para makapag-backstop dito sa Senado. Dagdag na sakripisyo ito para sa kanilang mahal na ahinsya, ngunit di maikukumpara sa di masusukat na pagmamahal nila para sa ating mga kababayan. Sa atin po mga dakilang bumbero, maraming salamat po sa inyong paglilingkod. Huwag sana kayong mapapagod sa inyong pagmamahal sa ating bayan. Continue to be an inspiration and in your hearts, keep the fire burning. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Joel Villanueva is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. Um, at this juncture, I would like to thank and congratulate our uh, idol, chairperson of the Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs, Senator Bato de la Rosa, uh, for ably sponsoring, Mr. President, and defending this measure and for accepting all our amendments. I fully support the modernization and strengthening of the Bureau of Fire Protection. Our firemen are known to charge without second thoughts towards areas struck by fire and other disasters and calamities. However, Mr. President, at present, they continue to be under-equipped and desperately understaffed. Literal na sinusunog natin sila sa apoy kung patuloy na hindi mapapalakas ang BFP. This is a bigger challenge considering that BFP is a member of the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council and also plays a role in handling emergencies not related to fire incidents. According to most studies, the ideal fireman to population ratio is 1 is to 2,000. With Filipino population estimated at 110 million in 2021, this means that we should have at least 55,000 firemen and women to reach the target. However, Data from DBM shows that total civilian and uniform plantilla personnel in BFP for 2021 is only 27,968. This means that we need to double our current BFP workforce just to meet the ideal workforce. 
The deliberations in the Senate also exposed the worrisome level of access to Filipinos to fire safety and response facilities. One, not all of the 1,715 municipalities, cities, and provinces in the country have their own fire stations. Two, not all of those fire stations are operational. Three, not all those operational fire stations have their own emergency medical services. And lastly, not all those EMS units have their own serviceable ambulance, trained crew, and apparatus for emergency medical services. We believe that the modernization of the BFP is not all about infrastructure and equipment, but also about investing in our workforce. As we showed during our interpolation, over 10 battalions of firemen and women today are nursing graduates. Napakalaki po, ginoong Pangulo, ang potensyal na gawing base manpower ng isang National Emergency Medical Service, ang BFP. The amendments that we introduced which the sponsor graciously accepted seek to strengthen the human resource development aspects of this measure, specifically in ensuring, Mr. President, that each EMS or emergency medical services unit to be established shall be comprised of ambulance with adequate medical equipment and qualified and trained personnel, such as but not limited to ambulance crew and drivers, and that they are provided adequate skills training with the help of relevant agencies like DOH and TESDA. Muli, Ginoong Pangulo, maraming salamat, mabuhay ang Senado, and may God bless us all. Thank you, Senator Villanueva. Majority you. Leader. Mr. President, I believe Senator Cayetano also wanted to explain her vote. Senator uh, Pia Cayetano. We don't see the, the video of Senator Cayetano, but... Uh, we have unmuted her. Senator Caetano, you're recognized. She's not online. Yes, Mr. President. Um, well, let's move forward then. Maybe we can recognize, maybe recognize Senator Gordon, Mr. President. Senator Richard Gordon's recognized. Mr. President, just a manifestation. I thought I had already manifested that I was going to be co-author. If the gentleman from uh, Lava will permit it, I'd like to be a co-author. <laughs> Yes, I believe you are already a co-author, Mr. President, uh, this is a good gentleman from Sambales. But let's just to be sure, just to be sure, Mr. President, for the record, Senator Gordon had already manifested earlier, uh, or a few days back prior, that he's co-author of the BFP measure, for the record. All right, thank you. Senator P. Akaitano is now on, uh, uh, you are recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll make this brief. Uh, my sole concern really here is similar to Senator Joel Villanueva's that, uh, we, you know, we take a big look at the bigger picture. Take a look at the bigger picture on our health care needs because uh, the provision on the EMS, the emergency medical services, uh, might overlap, but we can work it out in such a way that we make use of the huge uh, pool of uh, health human resources that we already have. I leave it to the uh, gentleman, the good sponsor, to ensure that there are no replications of duties, that the already trained in uh, four years uh, of nursing school um, students may possibly be tapped. Uh, and in other words, simply to ensure that we maximize our, our health human resource and not start from scratch when we already have this abundant resource at our fingertips. Thank you, Mr. President. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we have uh, two of our colleagues who wish to avail of the privileged hour, Mr. President. May we recognize our distinguished colleague, Chair of the Committee on uh, agriculture, no uh, no other than our colleague from Las Piñas, Senator Cynthia Villar, Mr. President. Senator Cynthia Villar is recognized um, in the EDP uh, unmuter. Oh, yeah. All right. Go ahead. Yeah. Do you hear me? Yes, no, okay. okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Senate President. Uh, and I wish to de deliver this speech as chairman of the Committee on Environment and Natural Resources, not as a chairman of Committee on Agriculture, although it is related also. Anyway, Mr. President, my dear colleagues, 
I rise on a matter of personal and collective privilege. Last week on March 3, World Wildlife Day was celebrated. It was designated as such in 1973 during the 66th session of the United Nations General Assembly in commemoration of the adoption of CITES or the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. The theme of this year's celebration was forest and livelihood, sustaining people and planet. It focuses on the links between the state of our planet's forest and woodlands and the preservation of the million of livelihoods that depend directly on them, highlighting the traditional knowledge of the communities, including or particularly indigenous people, very relevant during these times as well as for our country. This representation, as all of you here, of course, support the conservation of wildlife, which is all-encompassing goal of the World Wildlife Day. Among the efforts I have exerted as a legislator and environmentalist myself is pursuing the conservation and protection of places such as rivers and wetlands, which are critical habitats of various species, many of which are threatened by human development and what we call progress. What makes the issue even more important to our country is the fact that the Philippines is one of the world's 17 mega diverse or biodiversity rich countries, which hosts two thirds of the earth biodiversity and contain about 70 to 80% of the world's plant and animal species. We need to not only create awareness about biological diversity, but to take action about its <clears throat> protection because any damage or loss will cost too much for a country such as ours. There is so much at stake and we become vulnerable to the adverse side effects if we do not commit to taking care of our environment. We need to be more vigilant against biodiversity loss, wildlife protection, conservation of their habitats and related issues or concern. The Philippines is biodiversity rich, but is also among the world's biodiversity hotspots or those areas experiencing high rates of habitat loss. Hotspots have lost around 86% of their original habitat and are also considered to be significantly threatened by extinctions induced by climate change. Many areas in the country remain underprotected. These include wetlands, marine sanctuaries, tropical forests, among others. That is why I also pursued the amendment of Republic Act RA 7586, or the National Integrated Protected Area System, or NIPAS Act, which was passed into law in 1992. The Act provides the legal framework for the establishment and management of protected areas in the country. NIPAS refers to the classification and administration of all designed protected, designated protected areas to preserve genetic diversity and to maintain their natural conditions to the greatest extent possible. We successfully passed RA11038 or the expanded NIPAS Act or ENIPAS in 2018 to include more areas. Under the operation of the original NIPAS law, 13 sites were individually legislated as protected areas. The expanded NIPAS law facilitated the legislator, legislation of 94 more protected areas, bringing the country's total legislated protected areas to 107. 11 of these uh, protected areas are internationally recognized. Eight are ASEAN heritage sites, namely the Mount Apo, the Mount Kitanlad, the Mount Malindang, Mount Hihamigitan, Mount Timpoong, Hibok-Hibok, 
Mang Iglid Bako, the Tubata Harif, and the Agusan Mars. The Protected Area Turtle Islands Wildlife Sanctuary is part of the Turtle Island Heritage Protected Area, which is a transboundary protected area shared by Malaysia and the Philippines. Four of these uh, protected areas are Ramsar sites, namely Agusan Mars, Tubataha Reef, which is both part of the ASEAN heritage sites also, Olango Island in Cebu, and Las Piñas Paranaque Wetland Park here in Metro Manila. The more natural habitats we protect, the lesser the loss in biodiversity and the better it is for wildlife and of course people to survive and thrive. Our population, particularly rural and indigenous people, depend on natural resources for food and income. That is relevant also to the theme of this year's World Wildlife Day. The United Nations itself cited that over 800 million people live in tropical forests and woodlands in developing countries. Indigenous and local communities who are also considered as historic custodians of the planet's more important reservoir of biodiversity. Rely on them for their essential needs for food, shelter, and medicines, among others. The various conservationists and environmentalists who joined the celebration of World Wildlife Day on March 3 emphasized the livelihood aspect of this year's theme, forests and livelihood, sustaining people and planet. We share the habitat of wildlife, that that's, we are both sustained by them too. Destruction of those habitats translate to loss of livelihood and economic opportunities for people. That was one of the points I cited when years ago, I st stood here before you also depending the destruction from a planned reclamation of a critical habitat in my home city of Las Piñas, the Las Piñas Paranaque Critical Habitat and Ecotourism Area or what we know now as the Las Piñas Paranaque Wetland Park. It threatened to disrupt the livelihood of thousands of fisher folks and urban poor who depend on the wetland for their daily sustenance. Back then, the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources cited a study conducted by the National Fisheries Development Institute that cited uh, the Las Piñas Paranaque Wetland Park as a hot spot for spawning is in the eastern for spawning in the eastern part of Manila Bay and the volume of fish eggs laid is the highest in that area ayon mismo sa mga mangingisda at mga fisher fox group napakaraming yamang tubig ang kanilang na-harvest sa Las Piñas Paranaque Wetland Park. Ilan sa mga ito ay mga tilapia, tahong, hipon, alimango, alimasag, talangka, kanduli, dalagang bukid, banak, halaan, tulya, gulaman, salinyasi at iba pa. Ang mga ito ay bumubuo sa supply ng isda sa Cavite at Southern Metro Manila at iba pang yamang tubig sa buong Kamanawa which is Caloocan, Malabon, Navotas, and Valenzuela City, at pati na rin sa Bulacan. Kung nagkataon, hindi lang mga mangingisda ang apektado, pati na rin ang mga tao sa mga nabagit na lugar dahil maaari itong magdulot ng shortage of fish or seafood supply. I just wanted to cite that as an example of the link between livelihood and natural habitat. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources Biodiversity Management Bureau, which is the CITES Management Authority of the Philippines for Terrestrial Species, implements a program that deals with the conservation and protection of wildlife and or maintenance, restoration, and enhancement of their habitats pursuant to RA 9147. Priority activities under this program are the following. Sustainable wildlife resource use, management of invasive alien species, 
and enforcement of wildlife laws, rules and regulation, which include the operations, mobilization of wildlife traffic monitoring units, deputation of mobilization of wildlife enforcement officers, operation and maintenance of wildlife rescue centers, establishment and management of critical habitats, and conservation of threatened wildlife species, such as but not limited to the marine turtles, dugong, damarao, Philippine eagle, freshwater and saltwater crocodile, tarsier, Philippine cockatoo, and the Visayan spotted deer. DNR BNB sees the need for stricter laws on wildlife conservation and protection. Last week, Mr. President, in time for the observance of World Wildlife Day, I have filed Senate Bill Number 2078 or the Revised Wildlife Resources Conservation and Protection Act of 2021. This bill seeks to strengthen the wildlife conservation and protection mechanism in our country by amending the 20-year-old RA number 9147. The Philippines joined and ratified the CITES in 1981, and as such, the Philippine government has the obligation, among others, to adapt its own national laws applying the provision of the CITES, such as prohibiting the trade of wildlife in violation of the convention, imposing, pe imposing penalties for violation, and confiscating illegally traded specimens all of which are under Republic Act No. 9147 or the Wildlife Resources Conservation and Protection Act that was passed into law in 2001. RA number 9147 is a measure that provided the necessary environmental policy enabling Philippine government to manage and conserve the wildlife resources of the country comprehensively. RA 9147 included a list of illegal acts that are considered detrimental to wildlife with corresponding penalties such as imprisonment or fines or both that are intended to serve as deterrent for violative acts against wildlife and their habitats. In fairness, since its, its implementation, the Philippine Enforcement Authority were able to apprehend perpetrators of wildlife offenses. The more recent ones reported in the news include the seizure of 447 exotic animals in Mati City, Davao Oriental, valued at 50 million pesos in April 2019. The seizure in March 2019 of 1,529 live exotic turtles inside an abandoned luggage at the Naiya Terminal 2. And in July 2018, a truckload of banned wildlife meat composed of 21 frozen pangolins and 16 sea turtles was confiscated at the Department of Environment and Natural Resources checkpoint in Puerto Princesa. But admit, admittedly, while there were successful arrests of wildlife violators and confiscation of wildlife specimens over the year, there are many other violations that remain rampant and even undetected. Furthermore, the incidence of wildlife crimes has evolved and grown. Violators have become more equipped, organized, and syndicated, or with international connections. Likewise, the trade and transport of wildlife species have become wild-scale and transnational in nature. Thus, we need to give more teeth, so to speak, to existing policies and laws to further empower enforcement authorities to apprehend violator. And that's what Senate Bill 207, 2078 seeks to provide, to fortify the mechanism in place to afford better protection to our wildlife resources. The need to protect our wildlife resources finds critical relevance now as we continue to battle the ill effects of COVID-19 virus. We have gathered that there were researches 
indicating that the constant exploitation of wild fauna and their habitats, mostly through human action, had the effect of raising the risk of zoonotic disease transmission or the transmission of disease from animal to human. For instance, when humans destroy the natural habitats of wild animals, the latter may be constrained to transfer to location where the humans live. Destruction of natural habitat has been linked to the spread of infectious diseases such as Ebola, HIV, swine fever, and avian flu. More than two-thirds of these diseases originate in animals and about 70% come from wild animals or what is referred to as zoonotic diseases. According to the Wildlife Conservation Society, habitat loss forces animals to move to areas populated by people who become exposed to the pathogens of animals that in turn spread viruses. Scientists cited as example the Nipa virus outbreak in Malaysia in the late 1990s. Deforestation drove fruit bats to transfer from their natural habitat to trees in pig farms. The pigs came into contact with bat droppings and became infected. The pigs then infected farmers. Another example is the hunting of wild animals and eating them afterwards. And third, the interaction of human and wild animal is greatly increased in cases of illegal wildlife trade. There is studies suggesting that COVID-19 virus may have originated from bats and that the first people infected were traders in the bat meat who may have subsequently visited the Yunnan seafood market where the virus spread was first traced. Dr. Dong Yu, Director General of the Food and Agriculture Organization, or UNFAO, cited that the growing demand for wild meat, especially in urban setting, is increasing humans' exposure to zoonotic diseases and hunting pressure in forests. Wild meat is an essential source of food for millions of indigenous and rural people, accounting for more than 50% 50, 50 of protein intake in many tropical and subtropical regions. But unless hunting and consumption are conducted in a sustainable manner, that supply will gradually diminish with serious implications for food security. Already, recent studies estimate that 285 mammal species are threatened with extinction due to hunting for wild meat. Indeed, illegal wildlife trade and unsustainable hunting and consumption are just two of the main threats and challenges that confront wildlife protection all over the world. Many countries have in fact tightened their own policies and laws to protect and save their own wildlife from extinction and other threats. Most of their efforts and action have been successful and effective in fact. The Philippines, a mega diverse or biodiversity rich, should be leading the way or the most, as, or the most proactive and vigilant in the area of conservation and protection. Our wildlife protection law is over two decades old and as such needs to be amended and revised to be more attuned to the needs and challenges of the present times. As I cited earlier, there is so much at stake for a country such as ours and we run the risk of irreparable damages, consequences and losses. Our concerted and timely action will save not only wildlife, but our lives too, because we share one home and one planet. As legislator, the best we can do is to pass relevant and proactive law, as well as to keep reviewing or assessing the relevance of existing law, such as Republic Act Number 9147 or Wildlife Resources Conservation and Protection Act of 2001. As this representation is done, the amendments to which are proposed on Senate Bill 2078.
As in any environmental issue, problem, concern, or goal, our concerted efforts are crucial. It is good that people now, more than ever, are realizing that progress need not be at the expense of the environment and those who inhabit it. That is really worth emphasizing. We owe it to the future generation. It's part of our duty to leave this world better than we found it. Let us make sure that the future generation will, st will still see real wildlife or animal species, not just in pictures, because at the rate of extinction and decline in their population is really alarming. My guiding philosophy in carrying out my environmental advocacy is a Native American proverb that says, we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. Protecting this planet we call home in the best of our capacity is a legacy that we can and we should all leave behind. That truly matters more than anything else. With that, thank you, Mr. Senate President and dear colleagues. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, President. Senator Villar. Mr. President. Senator... Uh, um, the Senator Pia Caetano is seeking the floor here. Uh, yes, Mr. President. Yes. Senator Caetano is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I would just like to um, congratulate her honor, the, the, the committee chair of the Committee on Agriculture and uh, the Committee on Environment. And with her permission, may I just uh, spread into the record some of my observations, some of my own research, which are consistent with her honors. Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. I will proceed. Um, Mr. President, as I said, uh, I'd like to commend Her Honor for bringing up this very important matter. Uh, as soon as we started talking about it, uh, obviously I was reminded of the time that I was chair 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 chairman of the Committee on um, Environment and Natural Resources uh, from 2004 to 2010, and I think shortly after. But um, more importantly, uh, Mr. President, is I wanted to align her honor's uh, speech with our current situation, although she already touched on it, but I, I also did the very quick research because this has been my um, concern uh, now that I am also the chairman of our Senate Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, innovation and futures thinking. Um, Mr. President, uh, in an article published by CNBC, uh, they state that habitual destruction, habitat destruction like deforestation and agricultural development on wild lands are increasingly forcing disease carrying wild animals closer to humans, allowing new strains of infectious disease to thrive. Scientists say that the, the coronavirus pandemic is the most recent instance of how human degradation of wildlife habitat is linked to the spread of infectious disease. And preserving habitats for wildlife and preserving our world is a human health issue, according to Tierra Smiley Evans, an epidemiologist of the University of California. I wanted to emphasize the link between the importance of preserving our wildlife and our health care, the link between the destruction of their habitat and the pandemic that we are experiencing today, Mr. President. I think now more than ever, we should really look into these laws that we pass and its implementation. I'd like to share one incident um, at the height of, uh, well, in the early days of the pandemic, maybe this was around April or May, um, I heard that uh, there were, well, I already heard of this before, but what I heard was, um, if, you, if, if your honors will recall, a lot of stores were still closed, and uh, the report was that there were wildlife animals in cages in Kartimar, and because they were closed, Naririnig daw sa gabi yung um, mga growls, moans, and whatever sounds that these wildlife are making in in uh, their cages in stores in Cartimar. So I, I'm not familiar with it. I'm not a wildlife collector. In fact, I, I know that this is prohibited by law. But apparently, so many people know about this. And I wonder why 
We are allowing this wildlife collection to flourish in the heart of Metro Manila. So her owner's timing is, uh, for me, um, very uh, well-timed. And I truly believe that uh, her the bill that she mentioned along with this bill, I do hope her owner will carry on with a uh, hearing. Um, in fact, my my I would like to um, request that the committee on SDG be also a second referral because this actually touches uh, her honor's privileged speech actually touch, touches on so many SDGs. No, obviously, um, sustainable communities and cities are covered. Uh, when we talk about communities, they could be rural or they could be urban, and all of them are affected. Her honor. Uh, said that she is uh, delivering the speech as a chairperson, chair, chairperson of the Committee on uh, Environment and Natural Resources. However, at the same time, she also touched on how um, this, um, this uh, uh, problem that we have with, with uh, the, the wildlife management affects our agricultural supply and and uh, at the end of the day, affects our food security. So this very much affects um, SDG 2 on zero hunger because agriculture is a big component. SDG 3 on good health. Again, I already established that uh, it's very much, uh, um, this pandemic is very much uh, related to that. And then um, uh, decent work and economic growth because many, many people will not have have the ability to find decent work if we continue to be in a pandemic like this, which is brought about by our failure to address the impact of our lifestyles on wildlife. And I already mentioned SDG 11, which is Sustainable Cities and Communities. Um, <coughs> of course, uh, SDG 13, which is Climate Action, and uh, SDG 14 and 15, which is Life Below <coughs> Waters, and life on land. And finally, SDG 17, which is partnerships, because I truly believe uh, that we need to address this problem, uh, not from a whole of nation approach, national government, local government, and private parties. So that is my um, uh, intervention. And uh, I, again, congratulate uh, the good sponsor for bringing it up, and I hope that she will continue this uh, topic in uh, hearings in her committee uh, at the soonest possible time. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. All right. Thank you, Mr. Sure President. Yes, Mr. President, if I may also be recognized, I'd just like to put on record uh, uh, my congratulations to the Chairperson of the Committee on Natural Resources. Um, first of all, uh, for bringing up this uh, advocacy on wildlife conservation. Mr. President, for the record, uh, many of our colleagues probably don't know this. I'm the principal author of Republic Act 9147. I was the chair of the Committee on Natural Resources in the House uh, in 2001 uh, when we approved this. And uh, I actually uh, worked this bill together with Dr. Mundita Lim, who used to be the head of PAUBI, at uh, that time, as a matter of fact, Mr. President, she would joke me na, totoo talaga, ipapasa mo ito? Sabi ko, ipapasa ko yan. <laughs> so, uh, pinasap po namin after many years of attempt, uh, uh, at, an attempt to pass it in Congress in 2000 and, um, uh, 2001. That was my first term, uh, Mr. President. I'm very, very proud of that measure, Republic Act 9147, the Wildlife Conservation Act. And um, uh, time has come for us to revisit it, Mr. President. Uh, it's been 20 years. Uh, maraming palusot na rin na nangyayari sa, sa ginagawa nila mga provisions ng batas. I think we now know uh, how to correct these uh, um, deficiencies in the law. Uh, Senator Pia Cayetano is absolutely right. A lot of collectors are out there. But I guess one of the uh, biggest, I think, or most worrisome portion of conserving wildlife, Mr. President, is the conservation of its natural habitats. Kasi hindi po natin makoconserve ang ating mga kahayupan, no? our, our uh, um, fauna, if we do not protect the flora, the flora portion, which is uh, unfortunately the uh, denudation of forests, the encroachment into protected areas, ito po ang nagkakaroon ng sanhi ng pagkamatay ng napakarami natin endemic species. At uh, yan din napatutukan natin sa panibagong measure. 
And, uh, you know, uh, Mr. President, aside from poaching, we have to look at this uh, wildlife area, uh, your encroachment into wildlife areas. I'm very active in a particular program in Palawan, Mr. President, the Katala Foundation. I used to be the chairman of that. That's the Philippine Kakadu Conservation Project in Nara. This is in uh, Rasa Island, Palawan. And uh, even there where we have uh, had it protected by the uh, national government through the DNR mm. uh, declaration, nagkakaroon pa rin po ng poachers na pumapasok para manghuli itong Philippine kakatoo. These are the red-vented kakatoos, uh, which uh, are sold in uh, markets all over the country. Kaya nakakahinayan talaga. We have to increase now the penalties. We have to increase the prison sentences. Of course, looking at sustainability, uh, Mr. President, as well. Kasi uh, tignan natin ang root cause din ng poaching kasi minsan ay kahirapan. At kaya po sila uh, naghuhulin itong mga uh, hayop na ito, mga wildlife na ito para maibenta. But sa totoo lang, Mr. President, like for example, in our, ex our um, uh, site in Rasa Island, Palawan, Mr. President, we have made it a tourism site, an ecotourism park, wherein the poachers are now the wildlife uh, rangers who are protecting the park because they make money out of the tourists who see the birds in their natural habitat. Yung mga, ang dami-dami, no, from England, from Japan, they go all over the, coming from all over the world, they go to the Philippines because they want to do, go, do bird watching. And uh, of course, these parks that are protected by former poachers are the number one uh, areas where they visit. So marami po tayong magagawa para maging sustainable po ang wildlife conservation natin. Kaya siguro, one heart lang po kami ni Senator Villar dito sa bill na ito dahil uh, yun sa kanya po ay Senate Bill number 278. Ang akin po ay Senate Bill number 279. So magka magkatabi lang po kami number ng bill because we had the same thoughts in mind in wanting to conserve um, our wildlife. And tama po kayo, uh, tama po ang ating mal na chairperson, napakaraming sakit ay dahil po sa uh, pag-hunting at pagkain itong mga uh, wildlife na ito. And we've seen uh, everything from Ebola to HIV to even uh, uh, SARS and COVID-19, bird flu, avian bird flu uh, that has already uh, contaminated the hundreds and not well, upon thousands for the COVID uh, virus upon millions of people because of our uh, um, non-stop uh, hunger for wildlife. So I think uh, it's nature. I believe, Mr. President, I think that's nature's revenge for us. Unfortunately, no, ayoko sabihin na revenge sana, but that's the only word I can come up with now. So nagalit pong Mother Nature sa atin, it's time for them to bite back or to fight back. Uh, ika nga, unfortunately, with very catastrophic um, catastrophic uh, effects. So I fully support the measure, Mr. President. Again, congratulations to our dear colleague from Las Piñas. And uh, we're uh, very excited to start the hearings on this uh, updated uh, Wildlife Conservation Act. So mabuhay po siya, Mr. President. And um, we'd like now to refer the uh, speech of the lady senator from Las Piñas, to the Committee on Natural Resources uh, and to be seconded as requested by Senator Pia Cayetano, secondary referral to the Committee on Sustainable Development, Goals, Innovations, and Future Thinking. I so move, Mr. President. So moved. Any objection? Any none? Motions approved. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, today happens to be a special day for all the women of the world. Uh, it is also a day where we, the men, have to take the duties in the house. Because today, like what we do during Valentine's Day uh, and Mother's Day, today is Women's Day. So, dapat tayo ang muna ang mamumuno sa bahay, sa mga chores and duties. But uh, to, be able to, to be able to celebrate today, we have uh, ladies and gentlemen who want to recognize uh, the day as very special. So, may we recognize Mr. President Ovel also of the Privilege Hour, our distinguished colleague, from Panay and the Republic of the Philippines, also the chairperson of women and children, Senator Risa Ontiveros to avail of the privilege hour. Senator Risa Ontiveros is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to encourage the majority leader to 
take on more of the household duties, even when it's not Women's Day. As I guess, Mr. President, he already is also. <laughs> Mr. President, I rise on a point of personal and collective privilege. Kaunting tulog na lang po. In fact, in just a few hours, halos anniversary na ng quarantine sa ating bansa. Isang taon na nating tinututukan at iniintindi ang mga komplikadong scientific concepts. Sa inaraw-araw, bawat telebisyon sa bansa ay nakabantay kung paano natin mapapanatiling ligtas ang ating pamilya sa kabila ng patuloy na pagtaas ng mga kaso ng COVID-19. Isang taon na tayong may hugot na what could have been dahil sa pagbabalik tanaw sa pamamagitan ng tanong na ito. Ano kaya ang sitwasyon ngayon kung maaga tayong nagsara ng ating mga borders? Kaya Mr. President, mga kasama, ito ang unang International Women's Day na hinulma ng COVID-19. Napakarami na ang nagpatutoo. Iba ang latay ng pandemya sa mga babae. Kung noon, matining ang usapan ukol sa banta ng coronavirus, ngayong 2021, ramdam na ang hagupit at mariing pagdagan ng mga epekto ng COVID-19, lalo na sa mga kababaihan. Ilan sa mga pangunahing laban para sa mga babae na masisipat natin sa ngayon? Ang gender-related violence, economic disempowerment, ang wala sa oras na pagbubuntis dahil sa kawalan ng maayos na serbisyong pangkalusugan at human trafficking. That is why, Mr. President, today, I, along with all the other women senators of the 18th Congress, namely Senators Nancy Binay, Pia Cayetano, Laila De Lima, Aimee Marcos, Grace Poe, and Cynthia Villar, filed a bill for gender-responsive and inclusive protocols to address the gender-differentiated means of women during COVID-19 and other public health concerns, emergencies, and disasters. Ito po ay babae at bayanihan. Ito ay isang pagtugon sa mga natuklasan ng UN Women on the multiple ways that women are differently impacted by our public health crisis. Halimbawa na lamang po, ayon sa Women's Legal and Human Rights Bureau, sa lahat ng nag-report sa kanila tungkol sa online gender-based violence from July 2020 to February 2021, ang pinakamalaking segment, 34%, ay ang mga teenagers, 13 to 18 years old, mga menor de edad, 30% naman ay 19 to 25 years old. Nang unang magpataw ng lockdown na siyang itinuturing na isa sa pinakamahigpit sa buong mundo, may malinaw na pagtaas ng bilang ng gender-based violence. Bakit? Dahil ang ilang mga babae ay naging bantay sarado na ng kanilang mga abuser. Bakit ulit? Dahil work from home ang mga empleyado at distance learning ang mga kabataan. Ibig sabihin, mas mahirap humingi ng saklolo mula sa mga katrabaho, kaibigan at kamag-anak. Kung dati ay nakakapunta ang mga babae sa barangay hall para kumuha ng barangay protection order, ngayon, dahil sa takot sa infection, hindi na lang tinitiis na lang ang pagmamalabis sa bahay. Maging ang online sexual abuse kasi ay lumala dahil halos lahat ay naging netizens na. Pati mga chat apps kagaya ng Telegram ay ginagamit para sa palita ng mga nude photos. Minsan nga ay business na ito. Nabalitaan namin ang tinatawag nilang Team Lapagan o Lapagan ng mga maseselang larawan ng mga kababaihan. Ang laman nito ay kadalasang mga kuha ng kanilang mga karelasyon o dating karelasyon. Kaya tuloy ang mga psychosocial support pages sa internet ang naging takbuhan ng mga biktima ng gender-based violence. Halos hindi na maganda ugaga ang mga volunteers sa dami ng mga humihingi ng tulong, 
payo at minsan agarang saklolo. Pero nariyan sila at handang tumulong sa ating mga kabaro, lalo na sa mga teenagers. Ang bill na ito, Mr. President, ay para sa kanila. Ito ay isa ring pakikiisa at pakikibaka para sa mga manggagawing, manggagawang babae, migrante man o lokal. Ang Pilipinas ay may milyon-milyong domestic workers at karamihan sa kanila ay kababaihan. Why? Because domestic work, aside from being precarious and undervalued, is also largely and traditionally feminized. Ibig sabihin, karamihan ng mga tungkuli namin ay pag-aasikaso sa bahay. At kumusta ang kababaihang manggagawa sa gitna ng pandaigdigang krisis pang kalusugan? Ayon sa isang January 2021 na article mula sa The Guardian, sa unang dalawang buwan pa lamang ng coronavirus outbreak, more than half of the Filipino migrant workers surveyed in the United Kingdom had lost their jobs. Bumaba din ang sweldo nila to less than two pounds an hour, which is less than a quarter of the UK's statutory minimum wage. They're also at heightened risk of vir virus exposure, as many, if not most, work in the healthcare system or provide home care to persons with disabilities and senior citizens. For our local women workers, the situation is not much better. Bagamat parehong babae at lalaki ay apektado ng pandemia, data shows that during the pandemic, women bear the brunt of unpaid care work. Noon pa man ay pasani na talaga ng mga kababaihan yung unpaid care work. Higit 60% ang pumapasa ng mga gawain tulad ng pagluluto, paglilinis, pagtututor sa mga inaalaga ang bata at pagalalay sa ibang miyembro ng pamilya. But the COVID-19 pandemic heavily escalated the need for unpaid care work because of the closure of schools and the reduced public services for the senior citizens and persons with disabilities. Sa totoo lang po, Mr. President, para sa ating mga nanay, hindi po ba dapat kahit paano ay nakakapagpahinga kapag nasa school ang mga chikiting natin? Ora sana ito upang makapagayos ng tahanan, maghabol sa mga labahin, siguro makapanood ng konting TV o mag-Facebook man lang. Pero ngayon, kailangan na rin nating tutukan ang mga bata oras-oras pa kung minsan sa kanilang schoolwork. Ang mga babae ngayon, maliban sa pagiging asawa, nanay at manggagawa, tayo kinakailangan na rin maging school teacher. Mr. President, ito sa mga nanay na hinamon ng panahon na maging algebra, English, science at homeroom teacher. Para sa mga nurse at barangay health workers na exposed sa COVID dahil sa pang-araw-araw na paninilbihan sa mga may sakit. Ito ay pag-akbay sa mga babaeng migrant domestic workers na biglan nawalan ng trabaho dahil nawalan din ng trabaho ang kanilang mga amo. Ang bill na ito ay pag-akay sa mga teenagers na biktima ng gender-based violence pati mga buntis na misis na hindi makakuha ng barangay protection order mula sa kanyang mapang-abusong asawa dahil bawal daw lumabas ang mga buntis. Ito ay para sa pagbabayanihan ng mga kababaihan. Mr. President, dear colleagues, this pandemic is not just about pain and hardship. This is also about solidarity and resilience, giving space to the vulnerable, and people lifting up others amid all uncertainty. Today, as I file this bill with all the women in this 18th Congress Senate, today, on International Women's Day, as we celebrate women, we also celebrate sisterhood. Happy International Women's Day, Dear sisters, and to our male colleagues and allies here in the Senate, mabuhay ang babae. Salamat po, Mr. President. Thank you. Senator Isantoveros. Senator Pia Caetanes, recognized. 
Thank you. Mr. President, I would just like to commend Her Honor, Senator Risa Hontiveros, for uh, bringing to the attention of the body and to the rest of uh, the country and the world the plight of women, especially during this pandemic. We all know, I, I know that our, our gentlemen colleagues are well-versed also in the plight of women. And I would also like to take this opportunity, and I'm sure that the, the sponsor will join me, in thanking the gentlemen for making this an environment where us women can uh, um, engage in our profession, can uh, express our sentiments, can um, put on record our our views, whether they are, they are in agreement or disagreement with our colleagues. Because um, during the time that I was very active in the Interparliamentary Union, uh, I heard horror stories from some of our colleagues uh, from other countries, uh, in particular from Africa, wherein uh, they really were shut down by their male colleagues for the simple reason that they are women. So we'd like to, I think our honor will join me in thanking our, our male colleagues in uh, making this an environment that allows us to stand up to fight for uh, better protection for our women. And on that note, um, there's more to say, uh, Mr. President, but I think uh, the bill of her honor and the concerns that she raised uh, during the, the the speech that she gave is enough um, enough um, um, information uh, for us to use in the hearings that Her Honor will have uh, to enable us to further come up with policies. And many times it's not just new policies, but it's really implementation of existing policies to protect women. I'd like to just um, uh, emphasize my deepest concern for teen pregnancies. I think the presiding officer uh, joins us. I, I believe he's also expressed concern on that before. Uh, teen pregnancy, sadly, um, this is something that has escalated. Perhaps her honor can confirm uh, during this time of the pandemic. And who in their right mind can, uh, you know, you may or be, you may, people may have different views on how to uh, use reproductive health uh, that is based on their own um, personal uh, beliefs. And of course, I cannot see how in any way that can be acceptable. And as Her Honor said, uh, many of them are most likely uh, victims of violence in their own homes. Many of them could be could have been impregnated by somebody they know or close to them. And uh, this is really a sad state that not just in the Philippines, but worldwide we're experienced. So I thank Her Honor for bringing this uh, to the um, attention of the body and allowing us to be a co-author of the measure she sponsored. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much to the good gentlewoman from Tagig and Pateros uh, for being a co-author of this bill of all the women members of the Senate of the 18th Congress. I join her in thanking the presiding officer and the other male colleagues in this Senate for working with us women on many occasions uh, on issues that were particular to us as women and on common issues where we sought to bring uh, women's perspectives. And I commit uh, to continue with her and the other women senators to continue working uh, with our male colleagues in other areas where we can further advance the cause of women, uh, even those of different uh, soji, if I may say so, I believe I may say so on this floor, every Filipino, uh, Mr. President. And I also confirm uh, what the good gentlewoman said, that indeed the POPCOM itself raised the alarm about the spike in teenage pregnancies under uh, these conditions of pandemic uh, and quarantine. Concerns that are very close to the heart of us women, uh, especially the mothers, and I believe also of the male colleagues, uh, fathers as well. So thank you very much again to the good gentlewoman. At salamat po, Mr. President. Thank you. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, Mr. President, we congratulate the lady senator. Uh, first of all, we'd like to state that we are in full support of her speech and her bills and advocacies, particularly in the protection of women and children. Uh, you know, one thing that we'd like to put on record, Mr. President, we are a matriarchal society uh, in the Philippines, wherein mother knows best and the wives are usually our boss. <laughs> So, uh, Mr. President, uh, talaga mga bossing natin, kung tayo ay tigre, yung tamer at uh, trainer ng tigre ang usually ang ating mga asawa. 
Eh, alam na alam ni Tita Cynthia Villar yan. Siya po <laughs> ang uh, aming principal dito sa Senado. So, uh, Mr. President, I move that the speech of the lady senator um, be referred to the Committee on Women and Children, Mr. President. So, so yeah, so referred. Mr. President, uh, just to continue with the topic, we have a resolution. Before we take up the resolution of Father Bernas, we'd like to continue with the topic on Women's Day celebration. Uh, Mr. President, I move with the permission of the body to uh, consider Senate Resolution Number 673. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? Hearing none, so approved. Mr. President, uh, I move that we ask the Secretary to read the title of the measure so we can proceed with the... Uh, the Secretary the will read the title of the measure. Resolution commemorating the 2021 celebration of International Women, Women's Day on March 8. May we recognize, Mr. President, our distinguished colleague, the committee on the chairperson of the Committee on Labor and uh, Higher Education, no other than Senator Joel Villanueva, Mr. President, to sponsor the measure. Senator Joel Villanueva is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, distinguished uh, majority floor leader. Para naman po i-represent ang mga kalalakihan ng Senado, we filed this uh, resolution. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, it is my honor uh, to sponsor Senate Resolution Number 673, commemorating the celebration of the International Women's Day today, March 8, 2021. Pero sa totoo lang po, Ginoong Pangulo, marami po sa ating mga kalalakihan ang naniniwalang araw-araw ay Women's Day. Lalo na po sa mga kasamahan nating miyembro ng Takusa. Alam nyo na ho ang ibig sabihin noon. At sa mga palaging yes dear kay Commander. Mr. President, in the book of Genesis chapter 5 verse 2 it says, He or God created them male and female and He blessed them and called them human. Nililino po at pinagtitibay nito ang Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 which reads, So God created human beings in His own image, in the image of God. He created them, male and female, He created them. Ginoong Pangulo, hindi po buo ang tao kung babae lang o kung lalaki lang. Ang tao po ay babae at lalaki, patas at pareho, wala pong nakakalamang. Ang kalahati po ng kabuang populasyon ng mundo, maging ng Pilipinas, ay pawang mga kababaihan rin. Dangal at karangalan po ng ating pagkatao ang mga kababaihan. Sila po ang ating mga ina, kabiyak, tita, ate, biyanan, kapatid at anak. Nung nasa TESDA pa po tayo, Ginoong Pangulo, I can say that in various trades dominated by highly skilled male workers, a number of females are successfully breaking the barriers. In fact, more than 50% of tech book graduates are women, and they have proven that by taking courses more popular among men, they can also excel in them. Many Filipino women are now making a decent and stable living as welders, as drivers, automotive mechanics, and even power line women, Mr. President. Kaya naman po, marapat po lamang na mula pa noong 1975 na inilaan na Inalaan na nga ng United Nations ang ikawalo ng buwan ng Marso para sa kababaihan bilang International Women's Day. Subalit so, noong pong 1977, the United Nations General Assembly adopted a resolution proclaiming a United Nations Day for Women's Rights and International Peace na ipinagdiriwang po any day of the year ayon sa sariling tradisyon at kasaysayan ng mga bansang kasapi ng United Nations. Makalipas po ang mahigit sampung taon, the first woman Filipino president, President Cory Aquino, proclaimed March 8 as Women's Rights and International Peace Day at ang first week of March as Women's Week sa Bisa ng Proclamation Number no. 224 noong 1988. Nalagdaan din po ang Republic Act Number no. 6949 which established the 8th day of March every year as a working special holiday to be known as National Women's Day noong 1990. Subalit din noong Pangulo, wala na po sigurong mas bibigat pa sa pagkilalang ibinigay ng ating konstitusyon, ang 1987 Constitution sa mahalagang gampanin ng kababaihan sa nation building. Gayun din po sa pagtiyak, sa patas na turing at pagtingin ng batas sa babae at lalaki. 
Article 2, Section 14 of the Constitution reads, the state recognizes the role of women in nation building and shall ensure the fundamental equality before the law of women and men. Kaya totoo, man, totoo naman po ginoong Pangulo at alam ko pong hindi ididinay ng ating mga kasamahan dito sa Senado that behind every successful man, there is a woman. Sometimes women po ginoong Pangulo in plural form. But don't get me wrong as I'm speaking from my personal experience. Hindi ko po alam, ginoong Pangulo, kung paano ko po mararating ang oportunidad na ibinigay sa akin ng Diyos ngayon kung wala po ang mga babae sa buhay ko. Ang aking ina, si Sister Dory, siyempre ang aking asawa, si Gladys, ang aking mga kapatid, ang namayapang mayor ng Bukawe, Mayor Johnny, at ang kapatid kong si Jovi. Kaya po noong 2009, ginoong Pangulo, during our last term in the House of Representatives, As a back party list representative, we strongly supported and pushed for the passage of RA number 9710 or the Magna Carta of Women. I'm sure that you will agree that this institution is a women first Senate sapagkat palagi po nating binibigyan ng significance ang mga kababaihan sa ating mga isinusulong na mga batas. Mga female workers po ang naging inspirasyon natin noong Bina sinabatas po natin yung work from home law para tiyakin po na pantay na magagampanan ng mga kababaihan ang pagiging ilaw ng tahanan at bilang isang manggagawa. Mr. President, celebrating women's unique and essential contributions at home and in the workplace serves as timely remind reminder and relevant measure both of our achievements and the work we are yet to accomplish in order to secure the fundamental equality before the law of women and men. Today, we also honor our women healthcare workers and frontliners who offered their lives to fight COVID-19 pandemic and countless others who became sick and infected. Kaya napapanahon po ang tema ng pagdiriwang ng National Women's Day ngayong taon. Women in leadership, achieving an equal future in a COVID-19 world. This year's theme celebrates the tremendous efforts by women and girls around the globe in shaping a more equal future and recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. Naniniwala po tayo, ginoong Pangulo, na kailangan mailahok parati ang pananaw at saloobin ng mga kababaihan sa pag-ukit ng mga batas at pagpapatupad nito sa lahat ng antas at sa bawat hakbang ng ating pandemic response at recovery. Kapag kasama po natin every step of the way ang mga kababaihan, hindi po tayo maliligaw. Kapag patuloy pong umangat ang estado ng mga kababaihan sa lipunan, aangat din po ang bayan. At hanggang may mga babaeng patuloy na mangunguna sa laban sa pandemya, imposible pong hindi magtagumpay ang ating sambayanan. Muli, Happy International Women's Day of 2021. Maraming salamat, Ginoong Pangulo, dear colleagues, and God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Villanueva. Mr. President, may we request... Thank you, Mr. President. May we request Senator Villanueva if uh, all members of the Senate could be made uh, co-sponsors, co-authors of his resolution? If Before that, uh, Mr. President. the chair recognizes uh, Senator Pia Caetano. Thank you, Mr. President. Just a brief response. At uh, nag-abala naman si Senator Joel na um, magbigay ng... Uh, um, ano ba, pagpugay sa aming mga kababaihan and for all the women out there who are working hard, um, dealing with the challenges. So I'd like to thank His Honor for taking the time to acknowledge the work of women and to do the research that justifies why we have to continue working together. I wasn't able to include it in my response uh, to Senator Risa's privileged speech. I'll include it now. The importance of gender partnership, because uh, I think along with the discussion on women empowerment or addressing discrimination is also gender partnership because we cannot solve these problems alone as a single gender. We need to work together as a team. So thank you again, Senator Joel. Thank you. Senator so, Risa Tiberos is recognized. Thank, thank you, Mr. President. Likewise, I join uh, the good gentlewoman from Tagigan Pateros in uh, thanking the good gentleman from Bulacan for uh, making, yes, not only Mr. President for wearing women's color today, but indeed for taking the trouble to speak out uh, on our very special day out of the 300 uh, plus in a year 
uh, on various issues, including that of labor and health that are important to women. And therefore, may I also thank the presiding officer for giving the uh, opening prayer to today's session, a Women's Day flavor. So marami salamat, gentlemen. Thank you. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Indeed, uh, Mr. President, today is a special day. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're a matriarchal society. I believe we are top 10. I'm sure the lady senators in, on, in the floor know this. I believe we're in the top 10 in terms of uh, influence, no women, uh, how women influence our society in the world. I think we are one of the top 10 countries. Uh, indeed, uh, not only in industries, uh, also in politics, we've had elected two women uh, presidents, uh, Mr. President, in our in our history, and uh, uh, even in uh, in the, the halls of uh, the Supreme Court, uh, many of the very very uh, distinguished members of the Supreme Court were women, and many distinguished members of the Senate and the House of Representatives are women. Indeed, today is a special day, uh, Mr. President, for them, and I'm a proud member, Mr. President. Sabi kanina ni Joel Villanueva, I uh, Takusa daw po siya na grupo. Meron din akong grupo na isinama. Uh, medyo ako po isa sa mga leaders ng grupo na yun. Ay yung aming uh, chairman sa Dabao Region ay si Chairman uh, Ronald Bato de la Rosa. At uh, ito po yung grupong Uhaw. Uhaw is the Union of Husbands Afraid of Wives. <laughs> Yan yung grupo namin, Mr. President. And uh, we are proud of that. And uh, you know, we are proud... Uh, uh, that we are uh, faithful and loving to our wives and uh, and to all the women of this chamber. Uh, Mr. President, with that, I move that we, with no other comments from our colleagues, I move that we adopt Senate Resolution Number 673, Mr. President. So moved. Is there an objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Thank you, Mr. President. Si Senator Gachalian, Mr. President, malapit na rin membro namin sa uhaw. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Mr. President, moving forward, um, I move that with the permission of the body, I move that we consider proposed Senate Resolution Number 674, taking consideration Senate Resolution Number 675. I so move. Any objection? The motion is approved. Mr. President, may we ask the Secretary to read the title of the measure? The Secretary will read the title of the measure. Resolution honoring the late Father Joaquin G. Bernas, SJ, JSD, for his immeasurable and invaluable contributions to the legal profession and society, and expressing the profound sympathy and sincere condolences of the Senate on the untimely demise of the best-known authority on the Constitution and one of the framers of the 1987 Constitution. Mr. Mr. President, may we recognize our distinguished Senate President, Senate President um, Vicente Soto III, to sponsor the measure, Mr. President. The Senate President, Senator Vicente Tito Soto III, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Majority Leader, thank you. My esteemed colleagues, <clears throat> there are a lot of impressions, or should I say, misconceptions that people have about lawyers, whether these were caused by television shows, movies, or sometimes uh, first-hand experiences, there are some negative opinions about them. I'm reminded of a, a story of a man who was um, happened upon a tombstone that read, here lies John Smith, a good man and a lawyer. The man read it and asked, when did they start putting two people in one grave? However, Mr. President, this was not and had never been the case for Father Joaquin Bernas. He had a strong sense of morals and ethics. He was humble. He was calm. He exuded authority even in his silence. How could someone so endearing because of his gentleness and kind and empowering words can be conceived as unkind? Surely not Father Bernas. 
Father Joaquin Bernas was a Jesuit priest, a doctor of juridical science, lawyer, professor, writer, columnist, and author. He was a lawyer first before he became a priest. He had a passion for learning as he devoted his time and effort in advancing his knowledge and understanding of the law and other disciplines. Father Bernas obtained his Bachelor of Arts degree in English, Latin, and Greek classics and Masters of Arts degree in English, in philosophy, from the Birchman's College in 1956 and 1957 respectively. Bachelor of Laws degree from uh, the Ateneo de Manila Law School in 1962 and placed ninth in the bar examinations given that year. Licentiate of uh, Sacred Theology from Woodstock College in 1966 and Master of Laws and Doctor of Juridical Science from New York University in 1965 and 1968 respectively. He was never selfish. <clears throat> All of the knowledge he acquired from those revered institutions he willingly and openly shared, not only to his students and his community, but to the entire nation by being a member of the Constitutional Commission that drafted the 1987 Constitution. But his impartment of his expertise did not stop from his membership in the Constitutional Commission. In fact, it intensified after that. A bar top notcher and a known constitutionalist, he authored and published several books and articles dealing with the Constitution, such as The Intent of the 1986 Constitution Writers. I was in 1995. And then the 1987 Constitution of the Republic of the Philippines, a commentary in 1996. Constitutional structure and powers of government, notes and cases, 1997. Constitutional rights and social demands, notes and cases, 2004, among others. Father Bernas's uh, Commentary and comprehensive reviewer on constitutional law are must-haves for any law student and lawyer alike, Athenian or not. As an amicus curiae or a friend of the court, Father Bernas' views and arguments on some important cases of national significance and interests were usually sought, but by no less than the Supreme Court particularly on the Asia-Pacific Conference on the East Timor in the Philippines, the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act of 1997, the impeachment case against Chief Justice Hilario G. Davide Jr., the oral arguments in the FPJ citizenship case, where I distinctly and I was given the honor of uh, Father Bernas with a very length lengthy private talk that he had, he was a dear friend, and he understood where FPJ and I were coming from. That was in 2004. Also, the oral arguments in the Memorandum of Agreement on Ancestral Domain, or the MOAAD. In all these cases, Mr. President, he had consistently persuaded the court, orally or in writing, with clear objectivity based on the fundamental principles of justice and humanity, but humbly reminding his colleagues and followers that when it comes to the interpretation of the 1987 Constitution, the Supreme Court always had the final say, and that was a quote, quote from him. Sui generis, legendary, and non parallel. These are how the people who have worked with him and those who were under his wings had to say about Father Joaquin Bernas. Truly, he was all that and more. He was a great servant of the church and the law who had always responded to the call of legal and moral duty to protect democracy and human rights unmindful 
of his own physical well-being and whose unblemished devotion and faith in God and the rule of law had helped him, had helped rebuild the country through his teachings, writings, and leadership. His death is a great loss, not only to his Athenaean family and to the legal profession, but to the Filipino people and the nation as well. We salute you, Father Bernas, for a life of service and devotion to God, the rule of law, and your countrymen. And thus, I seek the support of my dear colleagues for the adoption of PS Resolution 674, taking into consideration PS Resolution number 675, um, th that uh, uh, resolution authored by Senator Richard Gordon. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, the Senate President. Senator Risa Ontiveros is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Respectfully uh, requesting the good Senate President and uh, the good gentleman from Zambales to make me a co-author of their resolutions. For the record, Mr. President, we are one with the country in mourning. Not only the death of a brilliant legal luminary, but also the loss of a great Jesuit educator and a devoted patriot. Father Joaquin Bernas will forever be remembered for his invaluable contribution to shaping our constitution. The constitution that provides our duties as public servants and that ensures the promise of democracy and rule of law to every Filipino. As public servants, we are bound to protect the constitution. We cannot thank Father Bernas enough for the work he put into helping create a constitution that reflects not only our hopes, but also our values as a people. Perhaps his greatest contribution was how many public servants Father Bernas has inspired. He was the Dean Emeritus of the Ateneo Law School community, where he continued to inspire the next generations of lawyers and public servants. In our uh, Sangunian 1980s uh, chat group of uh, Ateneo alumni, uh, we came to the same conclusion that we would always remember Father Bernas as the Ateneo president who protected our student council during dangerous times and supported the activism of the Ateneo and the Ateneo-based NGO community beginning in the 1980s. Dean Hofilenia said it best, Mr. President, when he described Father Bernas as indeed a person, an excellent man for others. Let us not let his legacy fade away. I share my heartfelt and grieving condolences with the family and the friends he has left behind to our whole Ateneo community and to our whole nation. Even in death, Father Bernas's teachings remain a North Star for the rule of law in these trying times. So we must continue to fight for the rights of every Filipino, just as he would have wanted. Rest in peace, Father Bernas. I will miss you with sadness and love. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Rizon Tiberos. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. We also uh, recognize uh, the one of the authors of the resolution, Senator Richard Gordon, Mr. President. The gentleman from Zambales, Senator Richard Dick Gordon, is recognized. You're on mute, uh, Senator Gordon. Yes, Senator Gordon. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and okay. thank you very much, uh, Senator President Soto, for an excellent uh, uh, presentation on the life of a Jesuit lawyer. Uh, and thank you, uh, Senator Ontiveros, for your remarks. Um, I had authored this resolution uh, the moment he passed on, and I wanted to be able to make sure that the Senate did not miss this opportunity to honor such a great Filipino, a Bicolano, a that, who has done so much in terms of the law and has become an example to all the students and Jesuits alike. Father Bernas, some people call him Father Bernie or Father B. Uh, we called him Father Kinnick. 
Joaquin. Talagang, uh, he was such a presence. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be a uh, part of uh, the high school and the college when he was there uh, as a scholastic. Uh, and uh, he always impressed me as somebody who was very, very deep insights and, and felt strongly at so many things in life. He epitomized to me, uh, he was the epitome to me of uh, the quintessential Jesuit, you know. They all Everything that he did was indeed for the greater glory of God. But among the Jesuits, he stood high, uh, shoulders above everyone, and I call it primus inter pares. He was first among equals, Mr. President. After all, uh, you know, it's hard enough to get into the society of Jesus. You know, it's a very, very elite society uh, that St. Ignatius de Loyola found, founded. And it's based on really magis, uh, the word, the Jesuit Latin term, which means more or to a greater degree. One demanded more or to a greater degree from any Jesuit or for that matter, any student, Mr. President. Magis. Uh, that's something that uh, came after our time in Ateneo. But during that time, we had phrases like in altum bola, which means fly high, to ambition, to work hard. And this is Joaquin Bernas. I will no longer delineate what uh, Senator Soto, the Senate President, said because, uh, you know, he was a lawyer par excellence. He had a master's degree in law. And certainly, uh, I can only say that uh, why I justify the fact that he was famous in their palace. Even at a young age, he was the father superior or the provincial of the Jesuits order in the Philippines. By that time, all American Jesuits, or most of them, had already gone. And uh, uh, in the Philippine province of the Jesuit order, uh, he was the provincial superior during uh, trying times. And he was provincial superior from 1977 to 1982. And certainly, uh, he did uh, so well, uh, especially during those times when we were still under martial law. By the way, in spite of his busy schedule, he baptized my son. And I uh, was very, very happy about that and honored about that because uh, certainly he just cannot get Father Bernas to do other duties like that, but he was humble enough to accept my invitation to come to my house and baptize my son in my home. As we all know, uh, Mr. Uh, President, he was a dedicated educator. He taught law. Yes, and as we say in the UP, he taught law in the grand manner, and he wanted to make, make great lawyers out of everyone. Uh, but he did this in the Ateneo, which was my uh, undergraduate school, but I took my law in UP. I know that Father Bernas was a dedicated educator because we were exposed to him in high school and college. He shared his knowledge and expertise on political and constitutional laws to young law students, inspiring them to become excellent public servants and legal practitioners. Father Bernas specialized in the Philippine Constitution. And as we all know, he uh, authored a number of uh, books on constitutional law. He was a go-to guy when it comes to the Constitution. As a Jesuit educator, educator Father Kinnick cultivated the minds of his students based on cura personalis, or the care for the individual person. Mr. President, uh, many things can be said about Father Bernas, but he was a, a human being par excellence. Not only smart, not only wise, but certainly a humanitarian at heart. He was indeed an excellent man. No, I correct that. He is indeed an excellent man for others, which is the Ateneo definition of uh, young people from the Ateneo, a man for others, but he was an excellent man for others. Uh, on September 12, 2018, Ateneo Law School and Energy Regulatory Commission Academy launched the Father Bernard Center for Continuing Legal Education into the Father Bernard Institute. 
uh, establishment of Father Bernard Center for Continuing Legal Education, Legal Education, was the Athenaeans' uh, reminder of his legacy and great contribution that you do not stop at getting a title, you continue to learn the law and to live the law and to make sure uh, your lives and ultimately Philippine, uh, the Philippine, uh, Philippines' uh, future is protected by the rule of law. So, Mr. President, he became a member of the 1986 Constitutional Commission, as we all know. And he was one of the pillars of that Constitutional Commission. Uh, he imparted this legal brilliance in the drafting of the 1987 Philippine Constitution. Father Bernas, indeed, is not only a leading constitutionalist, but a pillar of legal education. He was a highly intellectual individual, was often called to the court to share his wisdom as amicus curiae, a friend of the court on complex and noble constitutional issues. He was a major mind in resolving some key legal issues of national significance. On the defense of the constitutionality of a landmark legislation, show his humanity, he cared about the lowliest, the vulnerable ones, the indigenous people's rights half of 1977. He uh, made sure that it was defended well uh, for its constitutionality. Aside from providing advice on the legal strategy and theory for the case, Father Bernas also graduated, uh, provided spiritual guidance to the handling lawyers, boosting their confidence and morale into winning the case. For God, if God is with us, how can we lose? I suppose was a theory that he espoused, which eventually led to the implementation of the processing of ancestral domain claims of indigenous, indigenous peoples. Many of you are perhaps unaware that we were influenced by that, so that Sulik Bay, Metropolitan Authority, has provided the Aitas with ownership practically of the land, and they get a stipend from uh, Subic uh, for, uh, because they were the originals in that land. Uh, and that is the influence of Father Bernas upon me. On the temporary restraining order issued against the holding of the Asia Pacific Conference on East Timor, uh, he was also an amicus curiae. The Supreme Court ordered that to be lifted. On the constitutional issues on the Memorandum of Agreement on Ancestral Domain regarding the historic right of the Bangsa Moro people to claim their homeland between the Moro Islamic Liberation Front and the government of the Republic of the Philippines, he was also an advisor and backer of this. A landmark provision authored by our, my good friend Senator Subiri. Indeed, Father Bernas is not just a brilliant lawyer and renowned constitutionalist. He is a God, he was a God fearing man and a friend. Parang double antanen, pari na siya God fearing panisa. Which just shows you that just because you're a priest has entitled you towards the kingdom of heaven. He had to show it, he had to make it happen, and he had an earthly life dedicated to service, the standards of excellence for the greater glory of God, ad maiore de gloria. And certainly all this, he imparted a work ethic, ad astra per aspera. Through hardships, you go to the stars. Mr. President, the passing of Father Bernas uh, as a pillar of constitution, not only the Ateneo Law School, but also in our country, deserves an honor for his years of excellent dedication to service and God. I'm glad Senate President Soto delivered his remarks because uh, Senator Soto and I share one school, Letran. He was also an Ateneo for a while, but I'm glad he had imbibed enough to really appreciate what a good man really is. And I really salute Senate President Soto for his remarks. Well said, Senate President. So, Mr. President, today I urge our uh, colleagues to pause a little, to tarry a little in this world of challenge, a world of death, so many deaths right now, and pause a little and remember the example of Father Joaquin Kinnick Bernas, Society of Jesus, Mr. President. And I hope that all of us will unanimously give him the honor that he so richly deserves. 
an honor that uh, is reserved by the Senate to exceptional people uh, such as Father Kenneth Bernas. Mr. President, I submit and thank everybody for their patience in allowing me to deliver uh, this presentation about the life of a great man. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Gordon. Senator Joel, will you know Yes, Mr. Mr. President, this will be short with the permission of our distinguished uh, Senate President, Senator Soto and Senator uh, uh, Gordon. Uh, may I be allowed to uh, become co-author of the uh, resolution? I may not have uh, had the chance to really talk in person with the with uh, Father Bernas, but as a, a student of history and hearing uh, my my, my uh, personal mentors being uh, uh, or learning from from the master himself, Mr. President, I'd be honored if I can be uh, co-author of this uh, measure. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President. Majority leader. Mr. President, uh, uh, first to ask permission to be also uh, recognized as Senator Tolentino, after which Senator Peak Pangilinan, Mr. President. Senator Francis Tol, Tolentino is recognized, and uh, afterwards, Senator uh, Francis Kiko Pangilinan. Mr. President, I, may, may I ask the, the authors that I be allowed to be a co-author as well? Uh, Dean Bernas was our dean at the Ateneo Law School, and I can vividly remember that he has one basic thesis in all his books, in all his books about constitutional law, that the constitution is a living constitution. And a living constitution is one that evolves, changes over time, and adapts to new circumstances. We owe, we owe that doctrine not just to Father Bernas, but uh, his explication of that theory has been part of our constitution, has been part of legal theory in the Philippines, and he will be always remembered for that. So if I may be allowed again uh, to join as, as a co-author of that resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, thank Senator you. Tolentino. Senator uh, Kiko Pangilinan is recognized. Thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, uh, Majority Leader. May we likewise be allowed to uh, be co-author of the measure as a member of the uh, legal profession. The legal community is grieving uh, the loss of a great constitutionalist uh, in the person of Father uh, Bernas. Uh, we are also, uh, we were once part of the Ateneo academic community. We, we taught at the Ateneo for seven years from two, 1993 to 2000. And uh, he was revered there. He was highly respected in the uh, Ateneo academic community. And I am certain uh, the, uh, the academic community of the Ateneo is also grieving the loss of a great constitutionalist. And so uh, we bid him farewell and uh, we, uh, we mourn and we express our condolences to the Ateneo and to his family. And uh, may we be allowed to be co-author of the measure. Uh, thank you uh, for the record. Thank Mr. you. President. Senator Pangilinan. Senator Grace Poe is recognized. Mr. President, I'd also like to be recognized as co-author for the tribute uh, to Father Bernas. I remember during the court case of FPJ in 2004, when the issue was his citizenship, Father Bernas, as a member of the Friends of the Court, stayed for the 12-hour or more marathon uh, just to be able to defend the right of a child uh, and stating that FPJ should be considered uh, a natural born. Having a father is sufficient for him uh, to be considered a natural born Filipino citizen. Uh, we are very grateful for his fairness and for his legal expertise and for adding clarity to that debate that ultimately FPJ won. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Grespo. Majority Leader. Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. With the permission of our authors, if we can make, I'm sure, I'm sure none of our colleagues will uh, deny this, Mr. President, if we can make all members of the Senate as a co-author of this measure, Mr. President, with the permission of Senator Gordon yes. and Senator Soto. Yes. Before that, uh, the chair recognizes uh, the distinguished minority leader, Senator Franklin Dillon. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Yes, with the permission of the principal authors, I hope 
they can accommodate our request that we be made a co-author and that we take this opportunity to say a few words about the imminent constitutionalist, Father Joaquin Bernas. Father Joaquin Bernas was born in Baal Camarillo Sur, a, real, a cousin of my wife, Milagros Serrano, who is from the neighboring town of San Jose Partido, also in Camarillo Camar Sur. I recall the days when I had close interaction with Father Bernas when he was our advisor in the peace panel that went to Amsterdam in order to negotiate with uh, uh, Joe Basison on a peace pact, which obviously uh, did not come to reality. But I saw how softly, how politely uh, Father Joaquin Bernas would argue uh, constitutional points why we could not concede to the Communist Party of the Philippines the exercise of any sovereign rights of the country without their being elected. And over the years, I recall the afternoons or Sunday afternoons when Mila and I would visit Father Bernas in the Jesuit residence. And I have to make a confession. I would bribe him with a bottle of black label, which he loves very much. So it is with these fond memories, uh, both on a personal level and on a professional level, that we will miss, that I will miss Father Joaquin Bernas. Uh, I do not see another Joaquin Bernas emerging in the legal infirmament in the, in, for the rest of my life. So. Godspeed, uh, Father Bernas, and uh, may you rest in peace. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Drillon. As earlier manifested by the majority leader and with the permission of the principal authors, all those uh, physically and virtually present are made the co-authors of the uh, resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. And I do, I'd like to also sh share a bit of anecdote on um, our distinguished uh, Honorary today's uh, Father Joaquin Bernas on this resolution uh, honoring his life. I had an opportunity, Mr. President, to uh, see him when we were uh, taking up the Bangsamoro Organic Law. And uh, he gave me a lot of good advice, which uh, in turn was uh, adopted in several amendments, uh, particularly on the Bangsamoro Law. And uh, he was so helpful being a, a former, uh, being a constitutionalist and a and a former author of the 1987 Constitution, how he mentioned to us that uh, some of the provisions that we wanted to place could be done, as his intention at that time when they were uh, uh, crafting the 1987 Constitution for the autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao was, uh, according to him, uh, left to the future leaders of Congress to decide by enactment of law. And um, I, we really appreciated that, Mr. President. Coming from Father Bernas, uh, it was a, a big step forward to the fight for peace in Mindanao through the Organic Act. And uh, we thank him for that, Mr. President. Uh, that I, I'd like to uh, second uh, the uh, observation of Senator Drillon. I don't think we will ever have another Father Joaquin Bernas in our lifetime, uh, Mr. President. So he will sorely be missed. And uh, with that, Mr. President, uh, no other colleagues would like to uh, uh, further any comments. We'd like to move that uh, we adopt proposed Senate Resolution Number 674, taking in consideration Senate Resolution Number 675, subject to style. So move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Senate Resolution 674, taking into consideration... Yes, Resolution 675 is adopted, subject to style. Thank you, Mr. President. With the presiding officer, Mr. President, continue with this interpolation on the on his report or tomorrow na po? Yung pinag-usapan natin first hour. As I told you earlier, uh, we I, uh, requested to defer consideration of uh, yes, Resolution 559 under Committee Report 186. Apo, first hour, po, we we take in consideration that. We promise. Thank you. With that, Mr. President, we have two more measures. 
Uh, I move that we resume consideration with the permission of the body, House Bill number 8631 under Committee Report number 188. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Yes, Mr. President, this is the NAC granting Philippine citizenship to Benvenido Morejon Marañon. This is the gentleman from Spain who wishes to be a Filipino, one of the top footballers of uh, football players of the region. When I say region, Mr. President, uh, the ASEAN region and the Asian region, Mr. President. Um, may we recognize to sponsor Senator Richard Gordon. And Mr. President, um, no? yes. Senator Gordon is recognized. Mr. Uh, President, no member Mr. wishes to... Thank you very much. We're ready to be interpellated as far as yes. I understand. Uh, Mr. There President, interpolation? Yeah, I believe, uh, Mr. President, there are no interpolations for the gentleman from... Uh, uh, the future gentleman from Negros uh, who is applying for citizenship. So I move to close a period of interpolation, Mr. President. Any objection? Chair, here's none. Period of interpolation is closed. I move to open the period of amendments. If there are any, Mr. President, may we recognize the sponsor. Senator Richard Gordon is recognized for the period of amendments. The committee has no amendments, Mr. President. Uh, we have no amendments for this. Uh, for Bienvenido Morejon Marañón. With is that, Mr. Question. President, I move to close the period of amendments. Any objection? Hearing none, period of amendments closed. With that, Mr. President, I move to approve on second reading House Bill number 8631. So moved, Mr. President. Any objection? Uh, no. Yes, Senator Gordon? You were saying? No, no, no. I'm ready okay. to be interpolated. Any objection? Hearing none. House Bill 8631 is approved on second reading. Thank you, Mr. President, and congratulations are in order to both the chairperson of the committee and to Mr. Marañon, uh, being also principal author of this measure. I'm very happy that we have a very, very good player in the ASCALS football team, Mr. President, a chance to really shine in the international uh, uh, competition circuit. So, Mr. President, um, we move to suspend consideration the same so we can do third reading on Monday next week. All right, thank you. So, uh, consideration is suspended. Mr. President, I move that we uh, consider, resume consideration of House Bill number 8632 under Committee Report number 189. Any objection? Hearing none, consideration is in order. Mr. President, I move that we recognize the distinguished sponsor, Senator Richard Gordon, and I believe to uh, ask a few questions, clarificatory questions, is a distinguished colleague from Aurora, Senator Sunny Angara, Mr. President. The uh, sponsor, you, Senator President. Richard Gordon, is recognized and to interpolate Senator uh, Sani Angara. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, uh, I will accept the amendment right away. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Thank Go you, ahead. Mr. President. Thank you, Majority Leader. May I just uh, inquire of our good friend, uh, Senator Dick uh, Gordon, the gentleman from Zambales, if... Uh, he could just uh, yield to a few clarificatory uh, inquiries uh, from this representation who's very supportive of the bill, uh, Mr. President. Always, Mr. President, uh, to uh, Senator Sani Angara. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, at the outset, Mr. President, uh, Majority Leader, I'd like to thank our colleague for, uh, for swiftly acting on the bill as soon as the House passed it. He scheduled a committee hearing as soon as it was uh, referred to the Committee on Justice, which he chairs. Uh, I just uh, received a few calls uh, in the last week over uh, some of the effects of the bill, Your Honor, and I would like to solicit his views uh, on the matter, uh, if it's all right, Mr. President. Uh, I'm at, as I said, I'm very supportive of this bill, and uh, we hope to have it passed uh, in time for the, uh, the matches of Gilas, uh, the men's Gilas basketball team, uh, the last week of this month. Uh, but uh, be that as it may, I would like to solicit his view. Uh, would, uh, because uh, as you know, Mr. President, uh, Ange Kwame is playing as uh, an import for Ateneo de Manila, and I think he's played two or three years. Is that correct, uh, uh, Your Honor? Go ahead, please. 
in, in thank you mr president indeed he is uh i don't know whether you call him an import because he's homegrown he studied in the ateneo in high school and uh we chose his intent to be a filipino uh uh i would not uh, consider him an import like some of the others who have studied beforehand uh in fact mr president a lot of uh, some i know of a couple of people who went to uh our universities and uh have remained here but uh some have gone on to play for other countries like the gentleman there one gentleman from la salle who was really a terror on the basketball court until uh, uh hans kwame arrived uh, i would not classify him as an import because he really loves to become a citizen uh, but uh, i agree with the gentleman in his uh, classification or in his uh description of uh uh, Ange Kwame, uh, Your Honor, because I think Ange Kwame has really made the Philippines his home and uh, signified his intent to uh, live here and uh, uh, live as a Filipino even after his playing days are over. And uh, I know the chair made that clear uh, in his uh, remarks during our hearing. Senator Marcos, Majority Leader Zubiri were there during the committee hearing uh, chaired by Senator Gordon, Chairman Gordon. Uh, but uh, may I just uh, solicit an answer. Is uh, Kwame considered an import uh, in the UAAP at present, Mr. President? I'm, I'm afraid I love to say that I don't know uh, what an import in the UAAP means because there's so many of them. Uh, you have Dwight Achuete in our university in UP, Akweti, uh, and uh, of course there are others uh, in other uh, 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 universities. Uh, Kobe Paras, I think, is an American citizen. He also plays for UP. Juan Gomez de Leano, the Leano brothers are outstanding players. Uh, uh, and certainly uh, uh, you have uh, a lot of other folks that uh, have uh, other citizenship or double citizenship, if you will. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. President, let's say we pass this bill into law tomorrow. Uh, there is that distinct possibility of uh, Kwame uh, playing as a local and Ateneo being able to recruit another import uh, looms on the horizon. And uh, when I filed this bill, that uh, possibility was not clear to me at the time. No, So uh, may I solicit the views of uh, the gentleman from Zambales on that possibility? Would that be fair, uh, Your Honor? Well, Mr. President, I, I think... Uh uh, if we give him citizenship, he's entitled to all the rights and privileges of a citizen, Mr. President. Uh, so I don't think it, uh, I don't think it will uh, reflect badly on the Ateneo if they have Kwame as a, as a Filipino. In fact, it will give us pride that somebody had chosen to be a Filipino. Uh, same reason why I'm proud of my father who, who elected to be a Filipino. Uh, his other brothers went on to America, but he stayed behind. However, I, I would not know if the UAP would have a policy later on uh, that would prohibit that. Uh, uh, it's a free country. UAP can do that. Uh, but uh, so far as I'm concerned, uh, Kwame is entitled to play. And uh, if there are no rules concerning uh, what the gentleman uh, uh, has described as imports, that would have to be uh, uh, on the matter of the board of the UAP making new rules and regulations to that effect, Mr. President. I hope that satisfies the question. I'm trying to be at best to accommodate because I would also like to see UP uh, get an extra. <laughs> you know, uh, we are still, uh, for the information of everyone, we are still uh, being um, updated by uh, both the Converge and the DICT. So, yeah. are they okay now? Go ahead. You're, we can hear you now, Senator Gordon. I'm so sorry, uh, uh, Mr. President. Uh, I, like I said, to be very brief, uh, I think the UAP would have to make rules to that effect. But to my belief, as a lawyer, uh, I think uh, once he's become a, becomes a Filipino, he's entitled to all the rights and privileges of being a Filipino. And uh, if there is a new advantage uh, from the standpoint of Senator Angaro, who's a very, very influential member of the UP community, like many of us, uh, then uh, such a suggestion can be made uh, 
to uh, the UAP community and maybe they can raise that matter uh, sa UAP board. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, are we heard now, Mr. President? Uh, yes, yes, you are. Yes. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor, Mr. President. Uh, in case I understand, the UAAP had an emergency meeting today, and they were precisely going to discuss uh, this bill under deliberation by the chamber, uh, Your Honor. Uh, in, in, and the, I think the one of the topics of their uh, discussions is the uh, passage of a uh, rule uh, limiting uh, the ability to, of naturalized players to play or to be considered as locals, to play as locals in the UAAP in the coming seasons to those who had residency of 10 years. And under that, should that become a rule, Mr. President, Your Honor, then Anj Kwame would not uh, be able to play as a local. Uh, may I solicit your views as to the fairness of that rule? Would you say that was a fair rule? Would you say it's an unfair rule? Would, it, would you say it's a discriminatory rule, Mr. President? I, I would say it's discriminatory, Mr. President, with all due respect. Uh, the gentleman I revere as a, as a great lawyer himself, uh, there would be some diminution of the citizenship that is afforded to uh, Mr. Kwame. Now, it would be a different rule if they said no more imports because, uh, uh, you know, of the uh, play that Mr. Kwame provides. Uh, although I still think that would be discriminatory. Uh, the country will benefit from Mr. Kwame's participation in Gilas. In fact, Mr. President, in Gilas, if we have Mr. Kwame, we can still have another import. The way I understand it, uh, to make it, uh, well, that's why I was hoping that, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have uh, Kai Soto who's playing, uh, he's a Filipino, and uh, if he plays for us, we would be formidable, and if we get another import, I'm sure uh, all those other teams that uh, has been beating us would now uh, have to uh, have a double take on what they're going to do to to, to fight against us. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I believe if uh, Anj Kwame becomes a Filipino, he would not be qualified under FIBA rules to play as a local because uh, their definition of a local is someone uh, who acquired the citizenship of the country that he intends to play for or acquired a passport of that country uh, before he reaches the age of 16. So Anj Kwame would be playing for the Philippine team as a naturalized player or an import, uh, Mr. President. So we would not be able to get another... Uh, player or another import under uh, FIBA rules, uh, Mr. President. That, that's what I know, no? But uh, I'm not an expert on this. Uh, uh, yes, uh, yes. Senator Ankara has, has the advantage. I'm not aware of the FIBA rules, but uh, uh, certainly that is also, that can also be challenged because once you're naturalized, it will make more realistic and more, you know, uh, proper that when somebody gets naturalized, you don't trifle with citizenship. Uh, you really become a citizen with all the accoutrements allowed you. And that's why I sometimes, uh, like I said, I like Blatch, I like Duhit, Dauhit, or whatever you pronounce his name is. Uh, but still, uh, I do not want to provide citizenship just because we're going to use him for play. I like uh, the Spanish a guy, uh, uh, Marañon, because uh, he's, he's playing in in, in, in Bacolod, and um, there were two Marañons who were governors, but he's not related. But about the other hand, Mr. President, Marañon is really enthusiastic about being a Filipino. He was not unabashed uh, singing the national anthem before us, as you saw, and he really wants to uh, uh, live in the Philippines and uh, hopefully bring his parents here. And also because uh, in Spain, uh, uh, all you have to do if you're a Filipino, because we were part of the colonies of Spain before, is that you apply for residence for two years, and uh, they will allow you citizenship, of course, based on your good record and uh, your ability to be able to be uh, to, to be understood and not be uh, a charge or not be a heavy burden upon the state. Now, these two players will definitely not be a burden to the state, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you for the response, uh, Mr. President, Your Honor. When you answered earlier in one of, to one of my queries, uh, Your Honor, that 
you feel it would be discriminatory if the UAAP were to pass a resolution uh, requiring a 10-year residency for uh, foreign-born players to play as locals uh, in the UAAP, in the coming UAAP seasons. Uh, are you arguing or are you, uh, do you base your answer uh, on the, <laughs> is, that, is that a legal answer or I mean, is it based on law or is it based on uh, principles of fairness, Your Honor? Would you feel it's illegal or let me try to phrase that better, Your Honor? Uh, is it, uh, do you feel it's discriminatory from the point of view of law or just the point of view of fairness, Your Honor? I think it's discriminatory from the point of view of law and from the, uh, from, uh, the standpoint of equity and fairness. Uh, because that is a restraint to his full rights of an unnaturalized citizenship, a naturalized, naturalized citizen. And who would the UAB be trying to, uh, what would the UAB be trying to do? Uh, it would be trying to defy what uh, an act of Congress has undertaken to make him uh, a citizen because he wants to, and therefore we should allow him to play uh, because he is a citizen once we say so. That's true. That's true, Your Honor. And I, I checked with uh, all the past uh, citizenship laws, and they are they are passed without condition. Uh, so it would be unusual for us to place any preconditions to a person's citizenship. But again, I go back to uh, again the concept of fairness and perhaps parity in coll collegial sports, because uh, we all know perhaps that some schools are better funded than the others, uh, and. Uh, and perhaps better able to uh, to recruit uh, players as a result. And there's been a, a noticeable increase in uh, competition for prized recruits from high schools in collegiate sports, uh, a so-called arms race, if you will, Mr. President. And uh, uh, would it not better serve parity to if the UAAP were to pass that resolution uh, to ensure, because as it is, Ateneo is already... Uh, lording it over with uh, one import, and that's Kwame. And if they were to get another import, would that not be fair to the rest of the league, uh, Mr. President? I remember. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I, I was not gone. Well, uh, Mr. President, I don't think it's a question of uh, uh, fairness, but competitiveness. Uh, I'm not aware that uh, funding is a requirement. In fact, in the, in the Ateneo, uh, getting educated is the priority, especially for the Ateneo and Coach Baldwin. Uh, and the record speaks for itself. We had Frankie Rabat in, 19, uh, uh, in 1953, I think, or 54, uh, when Kaloy Laisaga, the great difference, was playing for us. Frankie Rabat failed in the Ateneo, and he had to take extra studies or extra 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 sessions to uh, qualify him to play. And he had to come in delayed in Brazil or Rio de Janeiro, Mr. President. So to me, it's a question of competitiveness. And whether you like it or not, for an example, we have Terdi Ravenna who doesn't want to come back because he's playing competitive basketball in Japan. And uh, I think he also makes a lot of money more in Japan than in the Philippines. And then you see the spectacle today of uh, Bobby Ray Parks, who I know personally, and his father I know personally, who uh, suddenly stops playing, says, I want to take a sabbatical. Uh, and of course, the headlines say uh, it's a question of character with him. I also recall another player uh, that uh, uh, from Ateneo, uh, Greg Slaughter, who was uh, uh, picked up from Cebu, along with uh, the behemoth from uh, San Miguel. Uh, uh, I don't remember his name quite. Uh, Junmar. 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 Junmar, yes. Mm. Junmar Fajardo. I, I would also like to say that a guy by the name of uh, Ben Mbala was taken by the Sal, and he was a monster of a player, if you will recall, uh, until Kwame came over. But, uh, you know, that's the uh, rough and tumble of the game. Uh, we can uh, make adjustments, I suppose, in the UAAP. Uh, if we're all sitting down there, I'm sure we will all agree. And uh, we don't want to win championships because we diminish the other fellow. But we won but we'd like to win championships because uh, we practice harder and we got more heady players. And uh, 
taller players, if you will. But that's the name of the game. Will the two, will the two gentlemen um, favor uh, favor this representation with uh, enlightenment? The FIBA, yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. yes, Mr. President. The FIBA, the FIBA is strict on imports. Ano? Sino ba nag-imbento sa kanila noon? Because uh, it appears na yung mga mga bansang katulad natin, ayaw nila ng marami import. Why? They want the first world countries to lord over the basketball all the time? Eh kung uh, kaya kung mag-import ng lima eh, bakit? Hindi yeah. ba? Pero ayaw nila. All right now. On the other hand, you know, th 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 this is the enlightenment I want to seek. May ikpit sila. On the other hand, dito sa atin, UAAP and NCAA <clears throat> allow imports <clears throat> to the detriment of the, the local players. Ano? Uh, ngayon, um, siguro, to, to help, that's because uh, it was Ambassador Danding Kuwako, pauso nung araw niyan eh. Sila Chip, right. saka, sila Chip England, ano? Uh, yes. to, to help the, the uh, to, uh, to help upgrade the, uh, the, the, the sport of basketball as far as the Philippines are concerned. Pero, it's not, it doesn't happen all the time. Just as a reminder, in 2019, Letran became the NCAA champion, no import. All the, yeah. other, all the other schools had an import. Letran did not have one. No import, no problem. That was the T-shirt. Uh, that was the, what was we were wearing on our T-shirts. <laughs> we were champions. So what's the beef? Ano mga problema sa mga import? Kung pwede mag-import, kaya mo mag-import. Kung hindi, <laughs> ayaw nyo lang, completely, wala nang import. Don't you think so, uh, gentlemen? May I pick your Mr. mind, President, Senator Gordon and Mr. Senator President, Angara? Mr. President, uh, may I add to the discussion uh, with the permission of the two gentlemen? Nung, <laughs> nung, is nung that an import point of view, uh, Your Honor? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is... Uh, from, yes. Uh, <laughs> from Spain? <laughs> no, from, uh, from my father's point of view, my father was in the championship. He was in uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. two back-to-back -back championship uh, winning team of La Salle. They beat Ateneo two times with the uh, with his uh, teammate Kurt Bachman, Joe Subiri, Kurt Bachman. Mm -hmm. yun group nila noon. And they yeah, beat Ateneo two I times back-to-back. -back. And he was very proud of that. That's what he always tells Tito Dick whenever he sees uh, Senator Gordon. But, uh, uh, and you know, was cheering them on was uh, Monico Pondebella at that time. Because <laughs> Monica was with Lasal, but uh, at that time, Mr. President, it was very exciting, and there were no imports. It was all the purely all Filipino players. Um, I wish that they could go back to do that. Uh, you know, that's true. If, no import, no problem, Mr. President. But truly, that that is a more of a more of a uh, I, uh, I'd say. Uh, uh, not a rule. It's not a rule. It's a special outcome rather than the rule. But whenever there's a good import, talagang na dominate ng basketball team because you know if you look at the scores of the imports, Mr. President, you look at their scores. They're numbering up to 30, 40 points, and everybody else is five points, six points. So talagang ibinibigay sa import lahat ng bola at hindi na po naglalaro minsan yung mga locals. Maganda sana, all import, I mean, all rather, all local na lang. Wala na pong import. Yan ang pinakamaganda. That's a nice UAAP, just like how my dad used to play before for NCAA uh, in those days. There were no imports. Uh, yung matatangkad lang doon, yung mga mistiso. Yung, or yung mga galing subik. <laughs> yung, yung Pilipino, galing subik at Clark. <laughs> yung, yung mga Pilipino noon na, na magagaling, Mr. President. All right, Chester Gordon, go ahead. Uh, he's on mute, Mr. President. Yeah. yeah Mr. President, <laughs> I, I, I can't help but uh, smile, snicker, and laugh at the suggestion of Senator Sabiri that we were beaten twice. Uh, I think they had a guy by the name of Kurt Bachmann, who <laughs> was really a German. <laughs> but he was very, very tall. <laughs> and his mother, his mother was on the bench, and one time we were, they were playing Mapua, and Charlie Batyon elbowed him in the stomach, and the mother came out with an umbrella chasing after Kurt. Let me decide, Mr. President. Uh, I, I am from Letran also, and that's why I was very, very proud of that Letran team that was importless. So it can be done, and it's even a bigger victory. And by the way, to my good friend, Senator Zubiri, after, uh, after we were beaten twice, 
we had an import by the name of Chris Arroyo from uh, from uh, Bicol, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, Lasal was already playing the anthem uh, when Bobby Litawa took a shot from the center and made it overtime. And then uh, in the second, uh, in the overtime, uh, Ateneo won at the last second by a by a, by a follow up by Chris Arroyo. And when he was interviewed by the Jake. Uh, by, by the great uh, Jake Romero. He said, what happened to you out there? That was a spectacular shot. And he said in his big wall, I cramps. You know? <laughs> I cramps. But you see, you see, it really depends on the kind of uh, players that we get. And I, I agree with President Soto that uh, uh, you can win games without an import. And we did that in 1953. We placed third. But third is still third, not first. And... Uh, Maybe, hopefully, with the help of a little help from our friends, we can be first. Like I said, I'm open, Mr. President, to whatever the UAAP says. Uh, that is a collegiate board, and they can make a decision. I dare say that it would be it fall under the unequal protection of laws if we do not allow uh, Kwame to play or uh, if you do not allow Atenea to get an import because the rules are clear. So long as you don't move the goalposts, uh, to satisfy or to benefit even our team, UP, or for that matter, Letra, I would rather keep it the way it is and uh, uh, let's see what happens afterwards. Anyway, it's an evolving and continually changing process. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. And with President. apologies to my good friend, not Mr. Subiri, but the father, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Subiri. <laughs> Uh, Mr. President, President, if I may, with the permission of, the the permission of my Gara. distinguished colleagues, thank you, Mr. Go President, ahead, from the champions of the 1990s uh, from UST Tigers, Mr. President, <laughs> uh, and, we, and we were champions uh, for four straight years without the uh, import, Mr. President. But let me just uh, put on record and spread into the records why it is important also, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, why we need... Um, um, outside local Import. players in uh, developing the sport of uh, basketball here in the country. It has evolved for, for so many years. If you look at other countries, they're doing it. In fact, uh, uh, for example, uh, Serge Ibaka became a, a, a Spanish citizen so that uh, he can also represent the, the, the Spanish basketball uh, uh, team. And uh, we have done that before, Mr. President, and I think the UAAP is also doing the same thing so that we'll be able to uh, cope up with the uh, uh, changing uh, development of the sports of a uh, sport uh, of basketball, Mr. President. That's why I think it is important, but it has to be highly uh, regulated, Mr. President. And that's what UAAP is doing, Mr. Mm-hmm. President. If you have uh, uh, a, a, a player who is outside the uh, category of being a local player, then you become uh, uh, extra special, Mr. President. They cannot, a, a team cannot use two um, outside local players inside the basketball court, Mr. President. They can have as many as they want, but there will only be one uh, uh, basketball player who is not local uh, playing inside the basketball court. Just to put that in uh, perspective, Mr. President, so we can uh, continue discussing this uh, particular matter. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Honor. We'd like to thank the gentleman from Bulacan who's... Uh, one of, uh, or probably the most skilled basketball player in the Senate, uh, on the Senate, uh, in the Senate right now. Uh, but going back, thank we thank him for his contribution. And uh, I'd like to add, he mentioned that Spain uh, naturalized Serge Ibaka, who's of African descent. Even uh, the world powers like the U.S. Uh, naturalized uh, players like Akim Olajuwon. I think even Tim Duncan, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. President. So it just goes to show that uh, uh, if we don't uh, play the game, uh, as the powers, the great powers of the game play it, then we will get left behind. Uh, firstly, Mr. President. And secondly, you asked about the FIBA rules uh, and why there are imports. And I congratulate Letran. That was really a legendary uh, stint of that team, I think. Uh, and uh, I think it's a raging debate whether to have uh, imports in collegiate leagues. I think the NCAA, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. President, had decided against it, uh, uh, whereas the UAAP has decided to limit it to one uh, import per team. And there, in, in doing so, I think the UAAP is trying to balance uh, what Senator Joel said, uh, which is to benefit 
from our local sort of uh, lifting all boats, Your Honor, uh, by having skilled uh, players from overseas play, then you have uh, you have that free market where everyone gets to partake, and uh, because of the superior skills, perhaps of some of these individuals, uh, some of our local big men uh, would also improve. I think there's no denying that someone like Jun Marva Fajardo or Japet Aguilar has benefited by playing against or practicing against someone like Marcus Dautit and Andre Blatch, uh, Mr. President. And uh, with regard to the FIBA rule, which is why they limit it also, they have that peculiar rule where uh, the rule is that there's only one, number one, there must only be one uh, uh, import na or naturalized player. And uh, for that naturalized player to play as a local, he must have gotten his uh, passport before the age of 16. I think they're trying to prevent uh, an unregulated and all-out arms race uh, between countries, especially the wealthier ones, like uh, the, the Arab countries. They can naturalize 10 players overnight, uh, Mr. President, uh, someone like Qatar or maybe the United Arab Emirates, and uh, then then we would really suffer. So I think what they're trying to do is uh, strike a balance between having uh, the best individuals all over the world pit their skills against other skilled individuals, while at the same time uh, ensuring that uh, money does not uh, play an overwhelming role in uh, having some sort of parity or equality among the combatants or competitors, uh, Mr. President. And that's, that's also what I was alluding to in my questions to the gentleman from Zambales. And he has put forth some very strong arguments, uh, which I may not necessarily agree with, but I appreciate his logic. I appreciate his, uh, his reasoning. Uh, and uh, perhaps we, we may never see eye to eye on this, uh, on this subject, Mr. President. Uh, but I, I feel it is well within the powers of UAAP to, to provide some, some, uh, some kind of rule which would be similar to uh, having a level playing field, uh, not tilting it towards the overly moneyed teams, uh, overly aggressive teams. And um, so I think that would be a good policy. I think it would be legal, uh, given that the UAP is a private uh, a league free to, uh, free to provide its own rules. And uh, so long, uh, the gentleman is correct. These rules must be prospective and must not... Uh, must be prospective in their application. To be fair, uh, Mr. President. So uh, I don't. I think he's he's made this point. I think I he's, I thank the chamber for giving me a chance to make mine, and I hope the UAAP will pass that rule uh, because it would be truly uh, well, yes, unfair, and I think uh, it would be to the detriment of fair play and uh, good competition in uh, a league which we really enjoy and. Uh, uh, it would be a shame if uh, if we would tilt the, the scales uh, in favor of uh, one team uh, immensely, which we may be doing uh, at the moment. But, uh, of course, it's an unforeseen uh, circumstance, Mr. President. And, uh, well, uh, yeah. So so I, I, I think I'll just stop it. I'll stop there, Mr. President. And I thank the gentleman from Zambales for, uh, for his uh, very gracious responses to my uh, queries, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen from Zambales. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Gordon, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, uh, just a point, Mr. President, about money. Uh, I've been a cheerleader of Atenea for eight years, uh, uh, and I remember that whether money was an issue. Uh, we did have people who tutored the players, uh, and certainly... Uh, when you talk about the United States, all these guys, Jordan, all the young guys, in fact, they have been lured to play for basketball teams, college teams, with some resources, Mr. President. But lately, and I don't want that to happen to uh, us, is uh, they, go, they go to uh, play in the NBA, even at a very early age. And uh, uh, certainly all these players, like Kai Soto later on, uh, will play back for us, or for that matter, that player from the Mavericks, uh, uh, Luca. Uh, he can, he can, and then then you have uh, that big guy from France in Utah, and we also utilize, uh, for example, our own Jordan Clarkson, Mr. President. So we have somehow levels up, and I think 
I think we should leave it up to the UP in the case of the Philippines to determine what's going to happen because I've seen the Korean teams, they also have American players uh, with the Korean ancestry and the Indonesians, the same thing. But it's a very, very uh, growing uh, and very competitive sport. And I thank the gentleman from Aurora. I thought that those questions were very prescient and uh, certainly uh, gives us some more room to think about it and try to come out with the the best possible scenario so that young players who are not as tall may be able to play. And certainly I congratulate uh, 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 Senator uh, uh, from Bulacan for being one of the best ball players in the country in basketball. Uh, and certainly uh, he has a lot of good things to say. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Right, uh, Senator Tolentino is uh, asking for the floor. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, if the good sponsor would yield to some, at least three or four questions. Uh, willingly, Your Honor, willingly. Mr. President, I'm in full support of this measure. In fact, uh, if we can do more, uh, we should we should recruit more. Uh, in passing, I, I mentioned the name of I will mention the name of Sage Tolentino from Hawaii, who's now playing for Auburn University, first U.S. Uh, NCAA Division One. But we failed to give him a passport when he turned 16 last year, uh, although he's been on the radar since he was 14 or 13. But just my, my questions would run like this. Is the gentleman aware of uh, Mars Perseverance journey? The, the, uh, the, uh, our rover, the rover that now landed in Mars, February 19. Not our rover, but the U.S. Uh, NASA rover. Well, to, to, to shorten this, there, there, there is a, a big NASA mission to Mars. Uh, it's as big as an SUV. And the parachute, before it landed, was as big as a football field. That uh, Perseverance Mars journey will take will take them for almost a decade, uh, sorting out the rocks and finding life on Mars. It's as big as an SUV, Mr. President. The it turned out, Mr. President, that two of the leading engineers in that Mars sojourn were Filipinos. One from Baguio, the name is Engineer uh, Gregorio Villar the third, and then another Filipina engineer, Engineer Genevieve Young. And a lot probably of other uh, sub-actors there with Filipino heritage. I'm saying this, Mr. President, because it really pains us to see a lot of Filipino talents wasted. And if the gentleman would, uh, uh, would refresh his memory, he's probably familiar with a basketball player by the name of Jackie Animan. Mr. President, are you aware of Jackie Animan? Jackie Animan is a lady basketball player. Uh, who, play, who played for, for Gila's women's team before. He's now the number one basketball player in Taiwan. And at the rate she's going, there is a big possibility that she might be converted into a Taiwanese citizen if, if we're not uh, cautious enough. She, she's the number one player now of uh, Xi, 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 Xi University in Taiwan. He's a superstar now in Taiwan. And we hope to have her back. And probably my, my third question, if uh, a good gentleman will not answer, I will answer it for him. Is he aware of the name Wesley So? Chess player. Are you, are you on mute, uh, sir? Controller. Yes, yes, I'm aware of Wesley So. And what a tragedy, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he, yes, wanted, uh, he wants to play for the U.S. because... According to him, we did not give him enough uh, support here. That's yes, you're, you're, you're correct, uh, Mr. President. Wesley So is from Bacoor. Uh, he studied in St. Francis College in Bacoor. And I might re reveal this as well. Uh, during my days as Metro Manila chairman, I used to provide him some allowance when he would drop by my office. It was uh, intermittent. When I was there, when I was not there, probably he would come and nobody would to him. Uh, apparently, uh, Wesley So is a genius and then migrated to the United States. He's now, he's now playing for uh, Web, Web Star University. And, he's, and just two days ago, Mr. President, he was given U.S. citizenship. He's the number one player 
of the U.S. team in so far as chess is concerned, and number two player chess in the world, grandmaster with the highest uh, feeder rating in the United States. But from Bako or Cavite, we lost him. We lost him because uh, I, I heard you're discussing money matters a while ago because we lost him probably because uh, there was not there was no enthusiasm in so far as our sports groups are concerned for for his uh, uh, peculiar uh, genius in in the chessboard. And, and that pains us also, Mr. President. And probably uh, the good gentleman is aware of the name Xi'an Chambers, Mr. President. Xi'an Chambers is a former import in the PBA, played for Alaska for several years here. After after that... Uh, oh, Xi'an Chambers. Yes. Xi'an Chambers, yes. 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 Xi'an Chambers, after that uh, University of Santo Tomas controversy in Sorsogon, would want to come over and be a Filipino and play as a and coach the University of Santo Tomas, volunteering his services. I'm saying this, Mr. President, uh, we, we have lost a lot of opportunities. And my, my, my point here is that, is it possible for the good sponsor and some of our other colleagues, if we just frame a general administrative law that would, that would, net capture all of our prospects whether it be in chess basketball gymnastics and even retrieve back our scientists th those uh part of the mars perseverance program retrieve back probably uh wesley so and i would not be surprised mr president after the end of covid 19 there probably would be two Filipino or three Filipino physicians or chemists part of that COVID-19 vaccine uh, laboratory team, Mr. President. So is, is the good sponsor amenable to the crafting of a general measure that would, uh, instead of just uh, handpicking individual uh, good sports prospects, but would have a, a lesser a lesser demanding a procedural administrative law that would get all of this. I'm saying this, Mr. President, because for the next PBA draft, we lost six PhilAMs because of the burdens imposed by the Bureau of Immigration, the Department of Justice, and these are mere paperwork. So is, is the good sponsor willing to craft? I, I will be uh, honored to be a, a co-author of a general administrative law that would uh, allow us to get talents abroad and redeem back Filipino athletes and scientists. Uh, may I answer, Mr. President? Uh, I think the questions are quite, the, the observations are quite telling and I commend the, uh, I commend the gentleman from Cavite, uh, Michael Abayan, uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, he uh, made these observations. Mr. President, where would America be if it were not a nation of immigrants? I mean, America draws on the best of the best of other countries and, you know, uh, recycles them into American citizens, Mr. President. They've been doing that all along. Uh, even the state of Israel, where would the state of Israel be had it not opened its borders to all of the Jews in Europe who suffered from uh, the Holocaust, Mr. President. And Canada, Canada is doing exactly the same thing. You know, all these things about immigration uh, that becomes issues in America with Trump, or for that matter, trying to veer away from uh, uh, the other uh, uh, countries that uh, try to liberalize immigration, is really more economical than anything else. Economical for the people who want to go to a land of plenty, an economic threat for those who live in America because they will lose their jobs to somebody better, uh, Mr. President. I would like to remind everybody also uh, that uh, France uh, won the World Cup uh, in football in 2018, I think it is. And if I'm not mistaken, I thought, I, I, I remember I was in France at that time with uh, Ambassador Saide, and uh, they won it with the... Uh, uh, immigrants, Mr. President, some of whom began to coach in uh, 
Spain, uh, in uh, one of the best teams in Spain. Uh, so, Mr. President, uh, it really all depends on the philosophy that we want, and I would be certainly hazard to try and uh, come up with a change in our citizenship and immigration laws, uh, provided that the citizens that we're going to get, prospective citizens we're going to get, will not just be a beneficial to us in sports, but in the sciences, uh, for that matter, uh, and uh, for our professors. Where would the Philippines be if, if the Thomasites had not gone into the Philippines and uh, taught uh, in our country in the turn of the century? And certainly as we approach the 500 years of Spain, uh, where would we be if it were not for the relatives of Senator President Soto and Senator, uh, Senator Subiri? <laughs> Just kidding, <laughs> uh, because they were able to come here uh, either as, uh, uh, as uh, sons of the friars or whatever, uh, but, but I'm just kidding, of course. But, you know, whether you like it or not, as we celebrate our 500 years, there have been many, many uh, uh, people of uh, the Iberian Peninsula who arrived here. And uh, really, uh, uh, it's something that I think we ought to think about. It created an administrative machinery for the entire country, and we were able to call ourselves Islas Filipinas. And uh, if memory serves correct, they even brought Nueva Filipinas in Texas, Mr. President. They were using Nueva Filipinas there, but then I'm going uh, astray already. But the point is, I agree with Senator Tolentino. It is a spark of vision that I think we should do and uh, try to come up with something uh, that we can uh, adjust so that we become, uh, we are able to attract the best and the brightest. When you look at the Statue of Liberty, Mr. President, it says, give me your tired, your hobbled masses, you know, all the poor of other countries coming to the United States, and that enriched the United States. In fact, they even used them as cannon fodder. I mean, I'm, I, I am not insulting them, but you will know that many of them serve in the military. For example, Senator uh, Inoue served uh, in Europe as, a, as an American, Japanese-American soldier, and later on won the gold, uh, the, uh, the uh, Congressional Medal of Honor too late. But these are the things that make a nation. Uh, uh, nations are made of many, many uh, other uh, countries and nationalities. And who's to say at the beginning of the world, the, the world had a lot of wandering itinerant people who would go to other countries. Uh, it's really just a question of fear. It's always fear that makes us... Uh, uh, what makes uh, decisions problematic. I hope I was able to answer, and I would appreciate the help of my good friend, Senator Tolentino, if uh, he would, uh, uh, he would uh, help me with this. I think these are times that we must consider that uh, uh, global citizenship is upon us. I believe the president of Pfizer is a, not an American. Uh, I believe the, the president of Moderna or AstraZeneca is not uh, an American, but these are global co corporations that are run by people from other nationalities, Mr. President, and eventually become American in the end. So from sports to science to education uh, and even to outer space, Mr. President. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I have no further questions, Mr. President. I fully support this measure uh, in the same manner as Senator Angara is a uh, very supportive of this measure, and I, I, I feel his spirit that uh, he wants more players of the calibers of uh, Russell Westbrook and Bradley, Bradley Beal in the near future. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Majority President. Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, there are no other members who wish to interpellate. However, there are Mr. proposals President. for amendments. Oh, yeah. maybe if I, if I, I may, may just... Joe, just just be, before, thank you, Mr. President, uh, with the indulgence of our majority leader. Uh, I, I know that uh, we are about to uh, close the period of uh, interpolation, and uh, 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 this representation will no longer ask uh, any question, but let me just spread into the records that uh, I thought that it is important and uh, we were able to tackle that issue raised by our dear colleague, Senator uh, uh, Sani Angara, uh, that this particular measure may be... Uh, legal and we can defend it in Plaza Miranda, but 
uh, I hope to uh, raise again the importance of ensuring that this would also be fair to uh, uh, all the parties concerned, Mr. President. And I'm glad that we were able to, to tackle it uh, this uh, afternoon, considering, Mr. President, that... Uh, and I will no longer hide my feelings, Mr. President. I, we were on the uh, uh, other side of the fence when Ateneo de Manila uh, University routed the uh, UST uh, Growling Tigers in the last uh, UAAP season. And if you look at the, the team of uh, Ateneo in the UAAP uh, uh, in the last UAAP season, uh, as a basketball player, Mr. President, I know for a fact that uh, uh, they are really a, a team to, to beat. And in fact, as I was uh, sharing with our colleagues here in the Senate, it would be very hard even for professional basketball uh, teams in the PBA to beat uh, Ateneo de Manila. But uh, can you just imagine, Mr. President, what would happen if Ateneo decides to, to get another uh, uh, player outside the, uh, the local uh, community or the local, uh, a local cager, Mr. President, who would play alongside with uh, 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 Kwame, Mr. President. So I could just imagine what would happen and how uh, dominating they would be in the coming uh, uh, UAAP season. But again, I thank the gentleman from uh, 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 Sambales for uh, being uh, very uh, open to uh, discussions. And uh, I thank the gentleman from uh, Aurora for uh, raising this issue. I thank the gentleman from Cavite, uh, despite the fact that Washington Wizards are not winning. Uh, he's still uh, very uh, passionate in, uh, in uh, ensuring that uh, sports development will indeed happen in our uh, beloved country. Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, I submit to the wisdom of the body. All right, uh, Senator Gordon. Just one last point, a brief one, Mr. President. Mr. President, that same Ateneo team, together with UP players such as Paras and such as the uh, the two brothers, uh, the Leano brothers, and uh, uh, players from La Salle and from other from UE, if I'm not mistaken, they beat everybody and they placed third in the Taiwan uh, Jones Cup, Mr. President. To my mind, it can only enrich our game, and uh, that's why uh, it has already been enriched by the fact that they were able to hold their own, even beat Taiwan twice, Mr. President, in that league. Uh, so, to my mind, I think it is important, you see now, been Senator Tolentino, that we start thinking uh, in a more liberal and open uh, way. Uh, Mr. President, Jafet Aguilar was recruited by the Ateneo. Uh, from the province. So also was slaughter, Mr. President. And in the old days, Loisaga, I believe, was recruited along with Boni Carbonell in Mindanao, in Davao, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. President. And Badi Badion was recruited in Cavite. So all this recruitment comes to play and all in the spirit of capability and competition and fighting hard, will they succeed, Mr. President? There was even a player, Nano Tolentino, uh, uh, who used, uh, from Rizal, who used to play also with the national team with Loisaga. So really, Mr. President, the moral of the story is let us uh, feed our people better, let us make them study better, and let, the, and let us give them all the necessary accoutrements to rise, not just to win medals and give them money, but to provide them, as Senator Tolentino gave Wesley uh, Saw, some allowances, which I did also to Glenda uh, Padrigo when she was a young chess player. I did the same thing. And with Johnny Revilla, you will recall, some of you will no longer remember him. He was a black uh, Filipino-American who played for Mapua and the national team. And uh, we also, my family supported him, Mr. President. So the long and the short of it is, we have to support our people. And I thank Senator Angara for his... Uh, uh, again, presence of mind, Senator Tolentino, Senator uh, Villanueva, and all the others. I'm sure Senator Dillon, and certainly Senator Soto, who is very much aware, uh, the Senate President is very much aware of the goings and the comings and goings of Philippine sports. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Senator President, Gordon. Uh, You're the leader. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, uh, on my part, Mr. President, no, I, I really wish that. Uh, um, no, we will be able to pass this and we will be able to uh, add to the Gilas team a naturalized Filipino who can play for us with the likes of uh, 
uh, Ange Kwame. And uh, that'll be great for the team. Although, although, or how, however, I, my heart bleeds for my UP Maroons. <laughs> because now Ateneo will be unbeatable with uh, one naturalized player and one uh, uh, import. And not only, I believe not only uh, UP Maroons will be bleeding, but also the UST, ano po yung tawag sa kanila bago sila maging Tigers? UST Blue Bells? Ano ba yung sabi ni Senator Gordon dati? It's growling Tigers. Growling. Growling then, Tigers. Yung sa panahon ni Senator Gordon, anong tawag sa kanila, uh, Senator Gordon? During Senator Gordon's time, gold it's a golden, uh, golden, gold golden gold glowing goldies. Glowing, the glowing, glowing goldies. Gold so, yeah. I like the better because it sounds rich. <laughs> baka ang problema baka pagalitan tayo ng mga ibang uh, skwelahan so, so Dominicano <laughs> oh, pero anyway for the record Senate President Soto dyan Dominicano rin kami <laughs> oh, okay. uh, but for the record Mr. President no, we're, we're, we are doing this uh, so that we can add more strength and might to the Philippine Gilas team uh, first and foremost to represent us in our international circuit, uh, international competitions, Mr. President. Yun nga lang, sana uh, maawa na lang yung Ateneo sa amin, mga iba <laughs> teams, at uh, sana naman, out of uh, propriety, ay hindi naman nila field palagi yung, <laughs> yung dalawa magkasabay, uh, at maawa na lang sila sa mga mortals ng uh, iba't ibang universities. But uh, with that said, Mr. President, I know I believe no other member wishes to interpolate. I move to close the period of interpolation, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, period of interpolation is closed. Mr. President, there's just a request. Now, I've had uh, two requests from two of our colleagues if they can study the measure for possible amendment, if that is all right with the the sponsor for tomorrow, we can take this up again. Uh, anyway, if we pass it tomorrow on second reading, it will still be approved on third reading on Monday. So there will be no no difference, Mr. President, with the permission of Senator Gordon. So with that, right. Mr. President, I move to suspend. I uh, mean, we recognize Thank Senator you. Gordon, Mr. President. Go ahead, President. Uh, no objection, Mr. President, and I hope we can pass it because I think uh, they will be playing, I think, uh, as I Senator Sani Angara, when will the Gilas game start? Uh, I think last week of March, right? Or first week of April? 22. Is that March 22? Well, there you go. So I, let's just try and make sure we pass, pass it yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, I think it's, I believe it's March 22 or March 23, uh, Your Honor, Mr. President. And that's why uh, my staff is drafting an amendment which we will uh, coordinate with your staff to shorten the usual period for effectivity, the effectivity clause, uh, Your Honor. I think we did that in the past uh, where we shorten it. So right after publication, you don't have the customary uh, 15 days, uh, Mr. President, Your Honor. Well, from the very beginning of this interpretation, I already said yes to, the, to your amendment. We already studied it together. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> mm. Ayan po, sana yun din ang amendment natin kay Maranyon because I believe Maranyon as a game. We can reopen, Mr. President. Why don't we reopen it and then I'll propose the amendment? Okay. But tomorrow, uh, yeah, tomorrow. 24 hours, we have 24 yes, I hours. Can make a, I can make a reconsideration, yes, since I voted in favor of it. That's correct. Yeah, since yes, as you said, it do doesn't that. matter if it's today or tomorrow, it's still Monday for third reading. Yeah. That, that's, that's absolutely correct, Mr. President. All right, so you before, can do that tomorrow. <clears throat> thank you. So with that, Mr. President, move to suspend consideration of the measure. Any objection? Eating non consideration of uh, 1892, uh, House Bill 8632. Thank you, Mr. President. We just have a couple of uh, housekeeping uh, measures before we uh, adjourn. Mr. President, yes, I move that we transfer from the Committee on Rules to the Committee on Basic Education, Arts and Culture, Senate Bill number 1969. Uh, this is the CCF Life Academy Foundation, Inc. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Eating none, so transferred. Senator Victor does recognize that. I'm yes, Mr. President. I just would like to ask whether the Senate Legal Office has already made uh, the study on the issue involving the judicial marshals uh, so that we can have that uh, uh, passed, Mr. President. Yes, uh, I, I am informed that they have, and they have already forwarded it to your office. Uh, we will forward. They will forward to your office today. 
or within the, Thank you, Mr. President. the next Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. And um, may we also request a good uh, distinguished gentleman from Sambales, the chairperson of the Committee on Justice. Baka, sir, uh, Tito Dick, pwede na natin matakal din yung statutory rape. Uh, in which <laughs> statutory rape. It's Women's Day today. Baka maganda naman. Sa mga kababaihan, increase na natin yung statutory rape. Kung pwede but the statutory rape applies to all, all genders. Mr. Yes, President. yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Once, yes, yeah. that's true. That's I'm, trying true. I'm trying very hard to convince myself that uh, uh, we should try to make it more stringent than it, than it should. But uh, I, will, I will put it out, Mr. President, and leave it to the floor uh, to decide. Thank you very thank much, you. sir. Thank you very all much, right. Mr. President. So last housekeeping measure, Mr. President, I move to transfer from the Committee on Health and Demography to the Committee on Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship as the primary committee and the Committee on Health and Demography as the secondary committee, the following Senate bills. Senate Bill number 496, Senate Bill number 541, Senate Bill number 1183, and Senate Bill number 197. These are uh, all, all have to do with e-cigarette regulations, Mr. President. All right, um, they are hereby transferred. And we move also that Senate Bill number 197 also be referred to the Committee on Finance as the Tertiary Committee. Um, tertiary Committee, Finance, yes. Any objection on hearing that? So transferred. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, with that, with uh, no other uh, topics for today, I move that we adjourn session until 3 o'clock in the afternoon Tuesday. March 9, 2021. Nice to meet Any objection? Chair is done. The session is adjourned until 3 o'clock in the afternoon of Tuesday, March 9, 2021. Good evening, everybody. Good evening.